died of the wounds you gave him. Oh, we got a model father here. This feels familiar. What? Don't matter. I could give a hot shit about your father in life. I want to see the god of war. You started this. I will end it. Look at you trying to remember your old moves. This is the god that murdered a pantheon because they hurt his feelings. Sons fell to you. Even this lesser version of you. But I am not my sons. And your boy, all father, has plans for him. <laughs> Consider your blood debt paid. Be seeing you. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, what's up, everybody? Put my big head on the screen. Let me put the chat on the screen because I forgot to do it earlier. There we go. All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another video. So, uh, last night, I saw a clip uh, that iGen had put out a spoiler cast for God of War Ragnarok with Eric Williams, the director. Um, so, I was like, fuck it. I might as well... Uh I might as well do a reaction to it. I haven't seen it except that small clip. That clip was Eric saying that, yo, uh, uh, what do you say? What do you say? That the, the dwarf who spits <laughs> when we get to uh, the realm of the dwarves, uh, Nidal Valir, uh, he spits at us, and that was actually Odin. And if you go to Odin's prison, you can actually see that. You know, it's correct. We're going to get into it. We're going to get into it. Um, but, uh,. But yeah, man, how you all doing? How you all doing? What's up, VGS? Good to see you in here, man. Uh, game is so much better if you beat on uh, a hard mode, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to uh, I'm gonna do a special stream for that. Uh, but I heard that the game is a lot better if you play it on a hard mode. <laughs> and I, I think I died like only like three times throughout the main game, so I agree with that. Not including like mini bosses and shit. But if you're in chat right now, say something as I load this up and I'm gonna say hi to you. So, what's up, Arvin? Uh, Static, uh, King, Aiden, Maki, Ozan. You guys have some names. I'm sorry if I butcher it. You guys know I'm not good with names. I say Realm of the Dwarves for a reason. But let's go ahead and let's hop into this spoiler cast. Let me uh, put it on your screen now. What's up, everybody? What up, Victor? All right, let's let's load this shit up. Okay, here we go. 
All right, all right. Let me make sure that the chat's actually can actually see the chat because you guys are reacting with this with me. So please feel free to uh, say something, and your chat will be on the screen. Hardest boss is yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, um, I'm gonna leave myself muted for a lot of it until I have something to say. Um, but I'm just gonna let this play out and you're gonna get my real reactions I don't think I'll be like yelling or screaming at least I don't hope I will <laughs> All right, let's get into it Oh wait, hold on. I think it's actually muted go over here and unmute it Okay Let's go ahead and see if that worked All right, here we go. Yes, spoilers. Beyond and hello and welcome to Podcast Beyond episode 777. It's a good lucky number. I'm your host, Max Scoville, and I'm joined by Josh Dew. Hi. Jada Griffin. Hello. And game director for God of War Ragnarok, Eric Williams from Eric. Sony Santa Monica. Welcome. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. I. Uh, Thanks for coming. Now, um, full disclosure, we're going to spoil this game. So I, everyone should have played it. We've all played it. Eric, have you played it? A couple times. Okay, good. That's, a couple that's important. times. <laughs> um, so yeah, you've, you've been warned. If you haven't played God of War Ragnarok, like don't and you don't you don't want to know what happens, then go go elsewhere. Just run run away. Go on. All right, you ready? You good? Okay, so <laughs> wait, this is for Ragnarok. <laughs> I haven't played that one. Oh, oh no, you should. No, it's good. Man. All right, <laughs> IGN gave it a ten. It's a good time. Oh, yeah. Cool. Um. So yeah, wait, just a good kicker question. Uh, Thor's hammer seemed like a pretty solid, cool thing to align with Ragnarok. You know, Kratos has kind of a track record of stealing god oh, weapons they're gonna, and then using they're going them right into it, huh? And okay. he never uses it. Why? I mean, he holds on to it once. Yeah, that's true. You got you there. True. But you don't get to use it. You don't get to like run around and hit stuff with it. He's got the axe. There you go. Was that the was that the reasoning? Like, yeah, it's I mean, just, the axe was made to be the counter to it. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it's almost like the good and evil weapon. So he wields the weapon for just. Or okay. Wields the weapon for you know. Tearing down the giants and things like that. So ah, really, th there you go, chat. That into Kratos would work very well. You know, it's like he. I'll also be completely honest. I'll tell you what I told the team. Like, and then people will be upset about this, and they can blame me. So here, if you see me on the street, <laughs> we can hit it, too much. Uh, it to me it was too easy. It was expected. Mm. It's mm. what people you know can't, they could understand it. They could think about it. It wasn't going to surprise. But the weapon that was going to surprise was the weapon that we gave him. Yeah, yeah. The, the way the story is told on how he gets it, who he is. I love, I love um, the spear. By the way, it's my favorite weapon in the game. If you think about his weapons, like they've been bestowed upon him. The, his core weapons, like the blades, you know, you get, they're they're pulled out of, you know, <laughs> the river of lava and dropped into his hands. Like the axe is bestowed to him by his wife. So mm -hmm. when that spear is made, it's for him. Mm. It has his blood in it. You know what I mean? They prick it, and it's his whole history. If you if you watch that scene specifically. The, the blood comes out as the Omega first, which is the, the old version of him. Mm. But the thing that really cements it is the, the symbol of Sparta. Yeah, you know, yeah. The, I love that shit, man. He's going to take care of business. Loved it. So we were, put a lot of thought into that. And, you know, I challenged the team, too. I said, hey, we want to make the best stick ever. You know, that all spears will be judged against. And I, I'll, I'll be honest, I think I'd put ours up against any I've seen in a video game. Yeah, yeah. That's, this is uh, the best spear ever. I don't like spears, spears as weapons, far, but... Once I got that, I had a hard time swapping off of it. Um, it's just, yeah. it's so fast, it's fluid. There's so many different utilities that you can use it for in combat. Um, it's just great. And that moment was so just amazing. Like I literally wept, like openly wept at that moment because it was just so powerful. Kratos opening up to to somebody else other than Atreus or, or Faye and was just very powerful. Like what was that, um, what was that like kind of like giving Kratos that moment to open up to somebody else. How did that kind of come about? That was about? my favorite scene in the game. I like think it's just been five. a culmination of his journey from 2018 to now. You know, he's, he's been this guy who's had to push everything down. He doesn't really have anyone around him. You know, and the fate kind of started to bring that out of him. Then Atreus really cracked the shell at the end of 2018. You know, Kratos lets the, he lets the bandages go, that amazing moment. And he talks to him and he tells him the story of his namesake um, and why he wanted to name him that. And you start to see that Kratos thinks about these things. He's not just this one dimensional character. And for me, he's always been that way. Even mm -hmm. go back. I mean, before God of War one, he's a husband. Yep. You know, he's a father. He's a generally he leads people. His, his city state respects him. Um, so 
we wanted to have these pairings in this game where, you know, Mimir and Brock became like his kind of like confidence, like his buddies and then Sindri and then the kids become Atreus's crew and you get these different points of view. And when you start to look at them, you go, oh, okay, that makes sense that they gravitate towards each other. So Brock being pretty gruff and, you know, and to have them almost both open up. That's what the, the moment is even more beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Brock is all upset and Kratos is the one that calms him down. And you don't really see Kratos do that. You, yeah. know, you want to see usually people trying to do the opposite or he has to take That's by himself. far a top five so in the game. I, I think it was just one of those moments in the writer's room where you're sitting there and you're thinking about it. And you're like, okay, we got to make this weapon. And how are we going to do that? And that was one of the very few scenes that I did any writing on. And I trust the writers, but there was the way that thing was crafted, all the elements, seeing the visuals, the blood, all those pieces I, I really wanted. So that was... I wrote structurally, I didn't write a lot of the lines, but uh, structurally how that scene was going to go. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's a special one. I'm glad it landed for you. Yeah, very much so. <clears throat> yeah, more on the, the spear, like the way you talked about it, it sounded like you, it was always the plan to make it a spear. Is that the case? Or were there other types of weapons ever considered? Yeah, I mean, when we started early on in the, like the, I would say the fall of 2018, the people were pitching everything. Obviously, Mjolnir was on the table, um, yeah. but I really wanted to go back and show who he really was. And if he was going to lead these people to this war, I wanted to see that guy. You know, the, the, the guy we never really get to see. And we saw a little bit of it in Ghost of Sparta, but not a lot of people played that because the, Which is a shame. the Spartans bring him his weapons. They bring him the arms of Sparta with his spear and his shield, and you get to see that general a little bit. But we wanted to see that in the Norse, you know, uh, yeah. mythology. Because it's just so separate, too. It's not. It's nothing like what you would see. The axe is still part of that. It's cold. You know, we kind of have these little phrases for the weapons internally for how we bake all the ideas in. And, you know, the axe, I think, I might get this one wrong because this is the one I always use, but it was like this frozen lumberjack, you know. And then the blades have always been this like ballet of fire. And so for the spear, coming up with that, um, here I challenged him. I was like, hey, come up with the phrase that people Mm -hmm. can get behind this. And he had this idea. He was like, it's just like beat the door down. (laughs) <laughs> you know, that's what he wanted out of that spear. It wasn't just this pokey thing that thrusted it. It was this thing that just like literally would smash your face in, you know, and, and he does that when you start hitting the R1 and he starts stabbing, but then he starts coming with the blunt side and yeah. it just, everything crushes. And then when you detonate it and you see all those rocks explode and it just had this violence to it, but it was through this kind of very forceful Kratos imposing his will as a general with a thinking mindset. Because you can't just go berserk with that weapon you have to think about what you're doing as precision it has a tight area of hit you know there's so many things that are put into it from both the storytelling and the combat that we wanted to be folded in where you kind of can't tell the difference yeah and that's i think what the team is is very good at they they blur the lines on everything so it just feels like it feels right yeah it felt really distinct i remember the first time i grabbed it i was like so used to playing with the blades with the axe and i grabbed the spear and i start swinging it around i'm like I don't know if I like this at first. I was like, this is, it's a different style. It's a different rhythm too. Mm-hmm. Uh, but after a while, I was like, man, this thing kind of slaps. And then yeah. especially when you're just like chucking at it from a distance, <laughs> I'm like, that was, that was my favorite part. I was like, yeah. I mean, I've never like, I don't care about Kratos like using a bow and arrow. Like that's not, that's not badass. But like <laughs> chucking this javelin like 30 meters away and then exploding it. Like, man, that was a great idea. Um, and combining it as well with Dropnir, which is like, an item from Norse mythology. Was that also always in like always the plan or? So we started with the spear yeah. and spear then I started to think about like, well, we, we want to have spear, infinite spears. We have to come up with some way to do this. We it, can't just it, like I, gamify it. We want it to be part of the lore. And we were talking about Dropnir and we were like, oh, well, it does duplicate. And then it was just one of those peanut butter chocolate moments in my head where I was like, hey, what about this? And they're like, are you serious? You think we could pull that off? And I'll, I'll go back. We even had a crazier thing because I had the wind element early on where when you would detonate it, it would shatter into a bunch of rings and it would leave shrapnel on the ground. Was... And then if you were able to like kind of use the wind, it would pick that up and you would get this kind of like shotgun pelting <laughs> uh, effect. But it just became too much where it, it, the player was just overwhelmed with too many things to worry about. Um, so we ended up pulling that idea back. But Aww. even then you had... There was like rings everywhere, um, but and this is Sonic we, the Hedgehog. You yeah. can't do that. Yes, yeah, so I was thinking right? Sonic the Hedgehog. That's exactly what I was that thinking. A joke, like, okay, what is that going to sound like? And then everybody's <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, all right, all right. Like that's we got to get back into our realm, and you know we don't want to like uh, having that noise. But yeah, it was. And then the moment with Sindri to go down and get it, then it just it brings made sure both of the blacksmiths. We knew Brock was going to be the one to go, but we needed to make sure they were both part of crafting the 
the mm. thing. So then seeing him go down there and the little Scrooge McDuck money, oh, you know, <laughs> get the ring. That was a really cool moment. Right? I had like, I mean, I had no idea what the plan was. They're like, okay, we got something for this weapon. And he descends down this well and just lands, yeah, in the Scrooge McDuck pool of <laughs> golden rings. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is <laughs> like they're, they're loaded. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, That's true too. They got so oh, much money. Set. Like, why are they still blacksmithing? They could retire. <laughs> <laughs> why are they asking me for my hack silver? <laughs> <laughs> <Right. laughs> Part, parts and labor, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah sure. Dwarves. Um, yeah. Now, clearly, like, the team really has this kind of, like, almost, like, poetic approach, like Frozen Lumberjack, like Ballet of Fire. Um, I guess I'm curious, what was the kind of core philosophy with Ragnarok compared to 2018? Like, was there, like, a sort of just a, like, a, I don't know, motivational phrase or, like, a really just a, (laughs) it's, it's like, a very focused, vague question here. Um, I'll go with the super high-level one. Um, I've always had this kind of theory it's you know this is a math formula that doesn't work, but it makes sense metaphorically to what you're trying to do, and it got the team to kind of buy into this this idea of all eights make a ten. If everything in your game is at an eight or above, then it will always rise, and if you have anything that's lower than that, it pulls down, and then people like yourselves can pick it, can pick it apart. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, <laughs> Shots fired. Uh, uh, but it'll it, it, you can you can tear it down. So what we would say, you know, is like, okay, cool, like this this is getting really, really good. Uh, animator, you could take that to a ten, but over here this this animation, maybe we didn't get the, the cloth right or whatever, maybe we could hop on that and get that pull that up from like Whoever a six animated to, the to spear an eight. and then did an amazing if you have everything job. Like again, sitting at that level, it's just like, man, everything is so good. This is really good, and it it does its opposite effect. It it pushes up, and it's just one of those ideas that if you know, glass half empty, glass half full. So if you have more things that are full, then people are more apt to be like, this is really positive, and this is creative and amazing. So there's a there's a George Carlin line about never having slept with the ten, and there's more to it after that. It's a similar similar philosophy, but uh. I like the approach there. It also, it's I just, love me some George Carlin. Yeah. So there, might, there might be something in there. <laughs> um, can we talk about Heimdall? Sure. Yes. He's a, he's a dick. Yes, oh, he's an it. asshole who's written perfectly yeah. to be an asshole. And Scott I love Porter it. absolutely crushed that character. Yeah. He was so worried because we didn't want to let the character loose into the wild. And he kept saying, man, why can't we talk about him? I was like, because we wanted to be a surprise. He's so good. Because we've seen the playtest feedback and everything you guys are saying echoed across like 20 playtests. And I'd send him the little quips. <laughs> and he's like, but do they like him? And I'm like, no, but that's a good thing, you know? So, but yeah, Scott exactly. Was You're not supposed that, to that like an asshole. It's a hard fight. Like, how do you make a fight where you can't hit a guy? Um, and these are the kind of challenges we like to take on. And uh, Adam Oliver, the, the main combat designer on that, you know, he was new to the studio, never built a boss fight before. So it was a big challenge for him. And he struggled for a bit, but he stayed after it. And, you know, I think it's, it's one of those you won't forget that fight no <clears throat> fucking blew his arm off. okay so you're probably all aware of the callisto protocol it's a survival horror game coming to playstation Is this xbox an ad? and pc platforms on december Bro, 2nd what the and if you want to fu- delve into this terrifying universe a little bit early you should see and my videos they were trapped which so there's not oh yeah okay <laughs> Look, it's a great game, but I'm, I'm not here for it, though, you know? On December 2nd, going from Norse mythology, okay. there's a certain amount you can pull from, but uh, is is Heimdall, like, canonically uh, uh, that much, that obnoxious, or was that, like, a creative decision? <laughs> that was a creative decision. Okay. And there's a, there's not a lot about any of these characters, because it's been pushed through the ringer so many different times. People mm-hmm. translate it, and then you have the Christian come in, and the, the paganism kind of gets lost in that, and so it's just, you kind of, we pick and choose what we want also for the game, um, put the God of War paint on it, um, the one thing that I did take is I read this one time somewhere is he had gold teeth and I was like, oh, that's even worse and more obnoxious. So we'll give him gold teeth, you know? And um, yeah, we just wanted him to be, the, what do we say? Uh, we wanted him to have the most punchable face. Yeah. He oh my God, had yes. a punchable yes. face yes. and I enjoyed punching it. Yeah. And so that, and that build up to where you, where you clip him. Where yes. He just clips him. And, and if you didn't notice, like the, he clips him with the right hand and he cuts him just right and he hits him with the ring clips him with the ring on his oh. hand. You know, so he yep. still gets him with Dropner even when he's in that moment. So just those little touches for us that are Wow, like, that's special. a great mm. fucking detail. Yeah, it, I... That's great like, detail. Like, there wasn't that's how a gets character the cut. like that for me in 2018. And, like, I think you could have, like, characterized Heimdall in a way that's just, like, I am, like, based on my Googling, like, his whole thing is I'm a very loyal servant of Odin. I'm dedicated. 
I'm just a good, like, dedicated guy. And he's a, I think, uh, he's closest to, like, the god of the humans, right? Mm -hmm. He kind of helped create their class system and whatnot. So why did you decide him to make him such a dick? Because, like, so <laughs> it's awesome because you're dancing right on the line of why we did that. So we try to look at all these gods where they have these abilities, mm -hmm. but they're not always good. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, and I don't mean that in a sense of their, their nature. The ability is not always a good thing. Uh, so like Balder, if we go back and look at that, we'll use that as like starting point. He, he can't feel anything. Imagine what that would do to you as a person. If you can't feel anything at all, it's going to drive you crazy at some point. <laughs> you're you're going to be a little messed up. So we were like, well, if you could always see what people's intentions are, mm. what would that do to you? And he's just like, you can't be around people. It's like everybody's gross. They always want something. Or there's a, a reason behind it. So he's wow, just kind of shut off. But that's I not really. think about that. Just, a dick at his core but oh, okay. um, you know it's that part <laughs> piled on top of it that, and that's why he when he's looking at the kid for the first time he's like you just and he starts saying wild stuff like i see cities burn because of you you know it's like he's not making that up it's like he really sees this in him and so we were like okay if you take that then there's almost a reasoning behind it mm. it doesn't excuse it but you could almost go well if I could, yeah, I wouldn't want to be around people either because people are kind of, kind of suck sometimes, you know, not always, but mm. they do. And so we wanted to give them these kind of like uh, dualities to their abilities that also kind of make them, you know, their personalities. The way yeah, that's, that's really interesting, like having the abilities kind of be the inspiration for the personality. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's really cool. And I want to ask as well as the decision to have Kratos kill him. I think as a player, when you meet Heimdall and you keep... <laughs> hanging around him, you're like, I really want to kill this guy. Um, and when that moment yeah. finally comes as a player, you're like, oh, this is awesome. Like that felt satisfying, really good. Satisfying. But when you're following Kratos in the story, he's consistently like, I don't want to do this. Like, I don't want to kill people. Yeah. And he's kind of driven to this point where he's like, okay, I like in a rage, like I have to kill him. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about that sure. decision? The whole thing about them even meeting up um, you know, because Kratos is trying to avoid it. Like, he even says, like, I'm not going to, we're not doing that anymore. You know, the whole plan yeah. was like, let's go get Heimdall. And then he's like, nah, let's not do that. And then yeah. he still shows up. And it, that's almost like a dumb luck moment. Mm -hmm. You know, you're like, you gotta be kidding me. I'm trying not to do this. Mm -hmm. And here he is. So, <laughs> you know, and then Kratos tries to give him the out. And then Heimdall being the prideful dude he is, you know, he was like, you know, once you start running your mouth about Kratos' kid, like... <laughs> Nah, it's like a rest day. It's not going to yeah. end well. Yeah, it's not going <laughs> to end well. So, you know, that arm comes off and then he comes back and you know, it was very specific the way, like I, I remember describing it to the animator. I was like, this has to be the most dirty, messy thing that it has to be in the game because we want to see the old guy come out. You know, and mm. we have to make everybody almost be like, oh no, like, is this the snap snap? Or was this like a momentary thing? And that's why I wanted Mimir off the hip and staring at it and yelling at him the whole time. Like where it's just like, Mimir's watching this happen, you know, and the whole choking him out, the arm fading, and him saying monster, you know, because it's like that's such a great the scene. thing that digs deep to Kratos. Yeah. Such and a he, great right scene. There, he has to hold that. Holy that he shit, did it. man. And it was, it, there's a beautiful little touch when he rolls the body over to get the horn. And he misses um, it, yeah. He goes to get it and he misses. Yeah. And then he goes in with even more force and snatches it, you know, because he's got so much adrenaline. And I remember, uh, we called cut on that take and Chris was like, oh, I'll do it again. I'll get the, the horn clean. I was like, absolutely not. Wow. Cause Chris was mad that he missed it. Mm -hmm. So it was real like upset. Chris grabbing that horn on the second one. Shit. Oh, fuck. You know what I mean? So he was like, all right, cool. Chris was pissed. Back, God like, damn it. Okay, cool. I see. Perfect. You know, but it's those magic moments that happen. Cause he was already in that mindset, but then when he knew, you know, cause he's also trying to hit everything to make sure the camera's where it is and then we missed it anyway he goes you watch it again you'll see it he goes back in with some force that's that's some of my favorite stuff in this is just the sort of the, the human element is like front and center despite everyone being yeah. you know some sort of deity are there any other like tidbits like that, that that come to mind of like sort of just organic things that came out during performance capture um there's always some the actors always we always try to make it could be a collaboration with the actors like we wrote the words but like if you're feeling this or you're doing that like certain things and chris is so good with kratos so there's a moment after they come back uh, after saving freyer and he gives him the boat and um uh freyer kind of goes like this as he moves away because he's the the drugs are kicking in that they gave him <laughs> for his wound and he's like you know make a vineyard god proud and he pumps his fist like that but the first few takes 
he kept kind of like doing this to Chris. And Chris came to me and was like, if he does that one more time, I'm going to grab him. Like, he's like, because Kratos would break that guy's arm. Oh my <laughs> God, dude. And uh, so we went over to Brett and we were like, hey, hey, like do something different because he wouldn't touch Kratos like that. And he was like, all right, cool. You know, but it was just like them, they figured that out together, how they were going to do that. Um, and there's a couple other little moments like that, but it's just, they're, everybody's into it. It's, there's no like, star if you will it's like it's a team effort to get Hell these yeah. scenes because in one shot camera if anybody misses start over so it's it's even the camera person has to be on like you know it, even somebody being like giving you the cue like we're getting really inside the how it's done now but like they don't carry the weapons on them there's a there's a stage hand walking behind them with the axe on their back and then when they go to grab it they let go and if that gets dropped or whatever, and then you got to start over again. You know what I mean? Damn, it's, it's all it's these strict, little moments. Yeah. It's just a ballet. And if you see it, you'd be like, whoa, this is this is wild. How this and, and then you get all that emotion at the same time when they're trying to hit all these little pieces and these micro bits. Let's and, go. Yeah. You know, the, another really one one that I love personally is when the kids um, birth the, the Jormungandr, when they put the soul in it. Mm. And I was looking at it one day and I had, I was like, because in the mythology is that they, they're the parents of these these giant monsters and it's like very we can't be doing it the way it was done in there it's very awkward yeah yeah, yeah so no shit to, like, find <laughs> interesting ways around this so i was looking at it how we had it and i was like oh okay when you guys go to put your hands up there put your hands like this you know you, you, and it's it's like a little heart and then the soul goes right through the middle of that and it's like them coming together for that bonding moment to bring the Jormungandr into life and it's just Little things, and then they, you know, they forgot a couple of times, and you keep moving their hands, and then they get it just right, mm -hmm. and then that ended up becoming the cover of the seven inch that comes with the collector's edition. If you look at that, that's their hands like that with Anger Boda and Atreus running into the field. Mm -hmm. so. Whoa, yeah, that's awesome. No, IGN. I'm really curious. When oh, did okay. the team know that Ragnarok was happening? Was it? Like, did you end 2018 knowing that there was going to be something afterwards, or was this sort of you left it hanging and picked up? Um, well, I mean, they wanted most definitely wanted us to make a sequel. The game did okay, right? So, uh, <laughs> but what it was going to be was still up in the air at that point. And then the first talk was like, okay, is it going to be two or three games? And then we kind of got to the point where we were like, I think we can do it in two. And then Corey was very adamant, like, hey, I think two is the way to go if we can touch this up. And then at that moment, he gave me like three things that had to be done. And I said, okay. And now he said, like, what are the three things? He's like, well, Ragnarok's going to happen. The kid's got to leave. And Brock's got to die. And I said, okay. And he goes, do you know why Brock needs to die? And I said, yeah, I remember we talked about this a long time ago. That he's the family dog. And so the, like, what? that's why. And he <laughs> what? said, yep. And then that was it. Oh, uh, because like, he's something that the the rest everybody of the loves. Like me Brock, just checking so in with Brock him, like, dies. We're going to do this. How do you feel about it? And he's like, that's that's good to go. So you bookended the entire game with the deaths of family yeah, dogs. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Pretty yeah. Pretty much. It's not really a fan favorite approach, but sure, yeah. go off. So, yeah, but, yeah. I mean, the thing works. that it works. It definitely works. Yeah, it yeah, works metaphorically, yeah. but yes. it's the. Um, what, what I think he means is that something that everybody loves, which is Brock. Everyone loves Brock, so Brock has to die. Moral of the story: Don't love your favorite characters. <laughs> Pretend yeah, you I hate mean, them all. Corey just, like, we have that trust with each other. So he was like, that's, like, the things that he had, and we just worked, and the writers back and forth, and that takes a while, you know, to get all the little beats and how everything's going to come together. And um, But yeah, Ragnarok was the thing. But we didn't want it to be the focus. Like, even though the game's called that, I think that's where some people get a little, like, perhaps frustrated with pacing and whatnot. They're, like, think it's just going to be Ragnarok from the start to the end, and it's, it just comes in towards the end. And it's because it's like nobody wants it to happen. <laughs> it's, it's just we're in this weird limbo period of Fimble Winter, and as long as nobody blows the horn, we're good. And then it just it has to be a really good reason to blow the horn. And then we give a good reason to blow the horn, right? Mm, yeah, with Brock. Because <laughs> you yeah. can't lose the family dog. There it is. Yeah. Was obviously, you know, you're supposed to kill your darlings and all that. Was there ever. Um, a maybe more bloodthirsty point in the writer's room where other characters were going to kill, get killed off or was there, you know, ideas getting, getting kicked around there? Uh, I mean, no, we weren't like going to do any kind of weird red wedding thing or anything like that. Uh, like we like, we love our characters, you know, like even, even the ones we killed, we, we felt, you know, like it had to be done with a sense of purpose and good reason. It couldn't just be done like flippantly. Um, so I don't think so. We were pretty, 
pretty set with the cast. I don't. You know, this game was it was wild because normally you do a lot of like trimming, and we didn't, we only trimmed a little bit out of this game. Like we had a really solid plan and just kind of stayed after it. And I thought the team was ready to do something in this scale, and I think they showed and proved that they could. Yeah, this uh, actually brings up a really good question from our community. Uh, Jake Jackson asked, uh, Jake? "How did you relate to the characters and their transformations? Such an intimate story. Is there a piece of you in it?" I think there's a piece of all of us in it. Um, sure, there's there's little tidbits of stories I told to the writers and them telling me and people on the team, like having little anecdotes. Um, I don't want to go into those right now and out people and what, yeah. what was theirs or whatever. But yeah, hundred percent. But a lot of it does just come from. You know, listening to media, um, just things that inf- kind of like build you up as a person. You, you kind of want to have other people go, I see you. Because no, no one person's going through one thing by themselves in the world. Like everybody's gone through something that's similar. Or there's a way into it. Mm-hmm. And that's what we're really, really trying to drive towards with the two POVs. But you have this father who's struggling with these things that he can't, can't teach a trace about being a giant. I mean, he didn't even know. Bay was a giant until the end of 2018. He's got to hold that. That's what the game opens with him, like, reflecting on that bag. Like, why did she not tell me? And he's got to raise his kid. And he's got to keep him away from all this crazy stuff that's about to go down. Yeah, Kratos and is a kid's like, shit. I want to know about that. And you can't fault him for that. It'd be, it'd be like if someone was adopted and they wanted to find out who their birth parents are. You can't say, well, I raised, you know what I mean? Like, you got to let him f- figure that out. So we wanted to have those, those pieces be there where people could connect. And there was a lot of ways in for different... You know, if you're just not into Kratos, there's still a way into that story for you. You can find something to latch on to. And uh, I think the one that a lot of people don't see coming is the Sindri transformation. Mm. Yeah, that was was insane. He did in the last game during the Fogan. We we play that card really well early where you're like, yep, he's that guy. He's almost like a a caretaker because he shows up and he's, he's... it's almost like when you go to school and he's like, you forgot your lunchbox at the bus and then your mom comes running out, you know, because he's got that moment where he's like, he and I, I got shell. you this compass and then I got you a little lamp. And, you know, and he's just always taking care of you and he's like, and don't tell Brock and all this kind of stuff. And you just see that. And then when he gets clipped on the head and you see him all bandaged up, because when the kid turns into the barrier, you even feel more sorry for him. And you're like, oh man, like this poor injury. But then when you see him with the gloves off, he becomes a shell you know, of and a And the man, blood though. splattered all over and you're like, oh no, this a whole what's going to happen here? And, He's like, he was always kind of like the thesis behind him. He's like the giving tree. Mm. You know, he's always giving and giving and giving and giving and giving until he's a stump. In that moment, when you see him at Brock's shop with Brock on the table, you're seeing a stump. Yeah. I, what I noticed about that, uh, that arc for Sindri is that, you know, he still doesn't forgive, uh, Atreus, uh, even to the very end of the game. Um, like, I don't know, was that even considered? Like, was there ever going to be, like, maybe we should have them have a reckoning or, like, just make up? No, it's a setup for the next game, know. man. It's I don't know, man. Up. Some people have fallouts and don't talk to their brother for 20 years or their best friend never again over some silly dumb shit. So, <laughs> you know, we, we're like, this is, you're not just going to bounce back, you know? Uh, so see what the future holds but uh, right now yes they're, it's, they're it's, it's clearly a setup for another <laughs> game man. Coming 2027 <laughs> it's clearly a setup um let's talk about and the crater. I, it's done really there's like well, an entire sure. area that's just it's just kind of you know buried in there that I'm shows curious to see what you guys thought of it. i love the crater i got to the crater and i was <laughs> I, like i, I, I have, I have so mixed much, feelings like, about the crater there's i love so much it digging here it it gave me like monster Hunter vibes where there's just like there's there's dragons flying around everywhere there's the it changes based on day and night cycle <laughs> like you can adjust the the map based on doing certain quests like the crater was one of probably one of my favorite areas from all of Ragnarok because there's just so much and you can go back and enemies respond. For me, I was so like confused test, sometimes. Like, how does this combo work? How does this armor set work against these different type of enemies? And it's just I, I loved it. Like the rag that the crater was just like what was the inspiration for that? What like was like we need to do this big open There's a good area. story to that, but I want to hear what they thought of it. <laughs> <laughs> so you're pointing at me. Yep. Yeah. I mainlined the game. Yeah. So and you I, don't know what I it haven't is? seen it. It yeah, just, just asked What do you mean you yeah. haven't I, seen I, it? I wrote this question. Yeah. I when I first discovered it, I was like, I mean, I'm a completionist, so I was like, let me just do all the side quests. Sure. And I just, I'm like, okay, we're going to go get this guy. Let's go find him. And then it drops you, like you climb that cliff and you see this massive area, like the Savannah Plains, basically. And I'm just like, no, what? Like, there's no main quest here. 
Like, what am I supposed to do here? This massive area. And then the more I'm like running around, I'm like, oh, it's bigger. Oh, it's bigger. There's this other wing to it. And like, there's just more rivers and other things. And I'm just, I was blown away because this is an optional area. Like you beat the game and you didn't have to go there at all, but it's huge. And there's still story content as well. Yeah, the that's what I was also story. like. Yeah, yep. great story content that, you know, gives you more, uh, backstory on like what Faye was doing before she met Kratos and the way that unfolds is really cool. And it's just, yeah, I, I want to know more about okay. it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so the original inspiration for that was, uh, after we shipped 2018, every time we finish a game, I give my wife carte blanche pick where we're going to go in the world because she's had to suffer with me not being <laughs> game and stuff like that. So she was like, I want to, go to Africa. So we went to Tanzania and Kenya and there's this place there called the Norngoru Crater. And it's this volcano that collapsed in on itself. And it's this giant valley and all the animals minus the birds, they're born and die inside here because the walls are so high. They never leave. Only the birds come in and out for the most part. And we spent a whole day there driving around, seeing all the animals. And I watched like a gazelle be killed by a cheetah in the morning and by the Holy night shit. when we were leaving there was nothing but a skull left Holy you know you shit. literally watch like a thing be on the planet and not be on the planet but it was this ecosystem and you had predators and prey and all these things going on at once and it was just incredible and when you're looking at it you know if you're going to make like an open world game or whatever you're looking for something that's kind of isolated but also open that's why it's always like an island you know or some kind of peninsula or uh you know, floating barge, you know, it's something that's like, it, there's enough to play, but it's like not like where you can go off forever. So I was looking for something we could do that'd be like that. And it just clicked in my head when we were leaving and I saw it again. Like I saw the skyline and the clouds and all these things. And I was like, I came back to the team. I was like, Hey, you know how we were going to toy around with making an open world space, check this out. And they were like, let's do that. And the uh, lead encounters, guy Andrew Christofidis and he's a level designer by trade he that was his pet project he was the encounters lead but he was building a crater as his pet project on the side um, oh my god and wow. uh with a bunch of other people obviously it took a ton of people but that was like his yeah. thing and he drove and all the people the, the progression team the quest everything that went into that because it's all layered and you can play in different orders and there's there's so much and you can do it with Atreus or Freya yeah that's a wild thing if you go back and replay all the XBL spaces I played it with Freya. XPL, yeah. sorry. That's our internal team exploration spaces. <laughs> um, uh, you can do that with Freya or Atreus, and the dialogue's different. Yep. You know, and so it gives you that kind of, again, the POV is really interesting when you play these spaces. So, um, but that was, you know, something we wanted to take on. It's like almost, almost like an R&D project, hmm. but that was so good that we shipped it. <laughs> I mean, if it, you know, if it, if it turned out terribly, it would be pretty easy to sort of excise it, but yeah. Yeah. I wish of, I played it yeah, with the trains. You know, I did. Some of the, but I guess, I found the learnings of how to do this stuff where it's like, it may not work out. And if it does, then it's okay. We can scope it down. Um, but it just kept going and the art team, like was really figuring out like what would work. And then the day night thing clicked and it just became this like, okay, we're going to go there and we're just going to go dragon hunts and all kinds of wild yeah. stuff inside there. So. Well, I'm yeah. If you haven't seen it, you're a bummer. You miss out. There's tons. Of well, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. So, so my thoughts on the crater. Uh, uh, hundred percent. Every single section, it's done for me. Uh, I liked it and I didn't like it because it was like a lot of areas and I would get lost a lot. But um, I wish I did it as Atreus and not Freya. Even though there is lore that Freya actually met Fey. Um, but yeah, love go it. Go back and love play it. I mean, definitely, definitely <laughs> sold it now. <laughs> Um, I'm just I'm fascinated because like that it shows like kind of a huge leap of faith, knowing that like you can have this this massive chunk of the game and some players might just miss it. You know, some players might just skip it entirely. Yeah, actually, that's a great lead in for me because um, kind of goes to our philosophy. Like the more you put into a game, the more it'll give back to you. And we really, really believe in that. Every game that has blown me away since you know little eight year old me was playing games was that game. If you if you put more into it, you got more out of it. And it shouldn't be demanded that you do that though. Yeah. If you just want to mainline it, there's an amazing story, you know, a very fitting end to it. If you want to explore out, you're going to learn more. You're going to get to play more. You can experiment. You're, everything's going to open up. Your armor systems are going to open up. Your you know, weapon components are going to open up. All these things just, and that's people that are going to go do that. That's what they want anyhow. It's, it, if you want instant gratification, our game is probably not for you. 
Like we make you earn a lot of things in the game. We want you to yeah, work no, for them. No Not shit, yeah. difficult. Just work for them so you can see everything it takes to get somewhere. You know, I think there's a lot of it's a gratification in the world right now and it makes things hollow. And we, you know, even like the, the petting of the wolves. Mm-hmm. You yes. have to earn it. You have to earn, earn the pet. Awesome <laughs> Shout out to the I, was, I helped out a lot with our uh, writing our wiki and our guides and stuff. And I, at one point, it's like the things that, you know, we have a thing things God of War Ragnarok doesn't tell you. And I was like, you can't pet the dog. And then I finished the game and got all the way in. I was like, yeah, yeah. Hey, remove this. You can <laughs> pet the dog, but you have to earn it. Yes. And I was I was like, this is such a amazing little detail that I loved. And I was just like, this made it all, I felt so much better about being able to pet the best boy in the world, in all the realms. Yeah. Like, it was it's, just. Yeah, like the, both sets, like if you go do all the, the raider camps, then you can pet Specky and Svana. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and calm them down and then when you finish the game if you go to Jotunheim to see Anger Boda and Fen's there and you get to pick him or pet him and it's just amazing so <laughs> and pet that's the another wolves? thing in the post game I don't think that, anybody's uh... found everything yet I was going to ask whoa, you about whoa, whoa, that whoa, whoa. there's a lot me. of hidden things in the post game <laughs> I mean, we see this this stuff happen where, like, you know, a year and a half after a game comes out, somebody's like, "Hey, I found a, a boss that no one knew about, or whatever." Is there is there anything oh, shit. that deep? Do you think? I, or? I'll be honest, I can't quite answer that one hundred percent because I haven't looked and seen what everybody's found up to this point. Um, but there are things in there. A lot of them are just for us, like fun stuff that we just like, and we wanted it to feel like yeah, the world's still there. You can pet all three wolves. You, you can't end and him say, you know, Except there's much like, to do, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then it's just like. The game's over and then that world stops. So we wanted to have this like living, breathing post game Thank you. where you get to see little wrap ups with characters and you get little hints of where they could go in the future. And, yep. you know, even though it's the end of the Norse saga, we leave it open for maybe there are other Hey, hey, hold on, Eric. Apologies. You can't just and, say and things whatnot, like that. So. Hold on, man. You can't just say stuff like that. Um, so what he's talking about is after the game is over, you can find a bunch of characters. You can find Thor's daughter. You can find Atreus' friend Skjolder, I believe his name is. Um, Skjolder has a thing for Thor's daughter, um, and he wants to, like, go with her. Um, and and uh, a lot of the character, everything post game are setups for things in the future, and I'm gonna talk about that in my next video. Uh, speak on, Eric. We'll see where that the future of Santa Monica goes. Now, yeah. I mean, if you pay attention to Tyr, I mean, he, you, mm-hmm. we, there's a reason why he does the six animations that he does at the end of the game. Excuse me, you fu- Wait, what? Okay, um, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, uh if you go to Muspelheim in the uh the fucking the where everything the at where Muspelheim and Niflheim kind of come together. He's sitting there. Yeah, um, he's doing yoga in Vanaheim and Midgard. He's just staring at his old statue, which is destroyed. Um, where else can you find this dude? Can you find him in the uh, realm of the dwarves? I'm sorry. Say that again. <laughs> so tier once you free real tier. Yes. Yeah. He is in all the realms. Yeah. Yes. So we've been, we mm, were we've been trying to. Down. We were tracking him. Yeah. Is he in Jotunheim? Does he pop up in Jotunheim? Um, I think that I don't think he's in. No. Jotunheim. No. Okay. No way. He's in Midgard. Alfheim. He goes to the Spark of the World. Yeah. Yeah. Spark of the World. Uh, he's at Svartalheim. He's Svartalheim. Uh, Vanaheim at the yep. at the Grotto. Camp. I haven't seen him in right. the realm of the yeah. dwarves so yet. There's like six different places he is. But, okay, so he's in. But six. he's in. But he's. He does very specific animations. Yes. So it may, we, may have seen that he's been traveling the world. Yeah. So we, we noticed that as well. I mean, it was, can I ask about that? Like, sure. Just the yeah, fact that. Yeah, how high with the bird? I do <laughs> <laughs> The fact that he even comes back at all was an, like a really big surprise for a lot of people yeah, who t- played the game. I, I think Tyr, that's another Atreus, like, post-game Yilder, thing that Boda, like, if you don't go back to Niflheim daughter, and find that prison and then go to the bottom, I mean, <laughs> Hopefully, I'm it's, not spoiling it. It's a it, spoiler cast. It is a spoiler cast. We're spoiling, we're spoiling yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, what, what brought about the decision to even bring him back? Because, like, we once the here. twist happened, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up, I mean, like, he's an awesome character. Like, the, like, I mean, even, it's funny, if you go back to look at the trailer from uh, 2021, you know, he's in there, and everybody's like, oh, man, this is amazing. And, all this, and then we put him in the, the end of the 2022 trailer where they're clasping hands and everybody's like, this is amazing. You know, two gods, two wars. Yeah. You know, that was me. Lives, but it's like, you know, the trick now. Yeah. yeah. And it just like, That's we, I thing. wanted it into the marketing where people were just, dude, all along, they just been, they just totally piled it on. But we were like, no, it's real tier is he's still a thing. And we want to know about him. We didn't want to just like throw him under the bus. So 
if you look in that prison in the cells, there's a lot of other dead bodies, and they're you know, and there's a couple of characters that are mm-hmm. alive in there that you fight right. uh, enemies and whatnot. But that's like Odin's whole thing. He, he was putting his thumb on the scale everywhere by impersonating other people. Yep. Um, there, there's a there's a super hidden one. That, yeah, oh I God, saw I this know, clip on I'll Twitter. This is today. what I saw on Twitter. When you're boating in the Svartalheim for the first time, right before the siren goes off, there's a little dwarf on a bridge and he spits over the bridge. <laughs> I saw that. That's Odin. Uh, yeah, I saw that on Twitter. It's what made me want to react to this. Oh yeah. my goodness. That's, that is that's funny. fantastic. And is that dwarf character model in the prison as well? Yes, or? it is. Oh my god. Yes, it is. That's yeah. So See, I didn't put, I didn't connect this to that's Man. Damn it, Eric. You, now we have to go to you can't, it's all like these other places to find it. Clothes are slightly different. Yeah, but right, right, right. It's like just little stuff like that to us is everything. So the one cool. that a lot of people, uh, I saw someone finally figured it out um, the other night was the the subtitles. Yeah. Like when, yeah, it's, when it Odin changes. Here speaks, it immediately no changes. On the Y and the subtitles. Uh, wow. The that I didn't game. know. And then we find real tear at the end, the accents there. Hmm. Damn, oh, man. I want his brain. Yeah, I want his brain so bad. Yeah. That's how deep the team, I mean, when we decide we're going to do something like that, like, because doing a murder mystery, like that kind of thing is like, you know, it, it could get really tropey. And did you see it coming? No. No. Right. Not at all. No. Did you feel cheated? No. No. Right, and so yeah. that's you know that's like that's like six cents. That's yeah, really he also calls Freya Freya. Yeah, that right. I noticed. So as well. when we said we were going to do that, because I remember we were in a meeting one day and we were talking about the tear prison and all that, and I was like, I said, the writers was like, what if, uh, what if tears Odin? And they were like, what? Oh. And I was like, what if he's just in disguise <laughs> the whole time? And like that's how he gets all the information. And he knows what's going on, and that's how we do the flip flops of the prophecies. And they were just like, okay, stop talking, like. We have to go, and they went away for like, I don't know, a good like five, six days, and like put it through its paces, and they came back. And they were like, "I think we can pull it off." Man, and there's so many little clues, like if, you know the prison where you break him out. If you go back in there, in that room, there's like raven feathers in the corner. Oh my gosh! You know that you can see it in the broom closet. That's crazy. It's just wait, the, the raven sad, feathers like, in the broom you know, closet? Oh my thing. god, <laughs> dude! Dig the knife into her. You know, like it's there's when you go back, it's. Right. You can see it all, all and you're right like, there. oh, come on. Like, how did I see it? Because you know, but right. when you don't know, it's it's tricky. So, Can I, like, I was really fascinated with Odin, like, your guys' take on Odin as a character in this game. Yeah, uh, here we go. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, you hit his appearance in the trailers, uh, even the fact that it was played by Richard Schiff. Um, and that when he first movie. comes walking in, I was really... I was really drawn to him just because he was so casual. So mm-hmm. casual. And I, that's not something we typically see in any like portrayals of the all father, right? It's like this guy who's uh, very like Anthony Hopkins, right? Like that's what you kind of imagine as Odin. Like, I don't know. It, who that is. Can you tell us what inspired that decision to make him kind of, you know, sure. West Wing Richard Schiff? <laughs> well, there was a couple of things. I mean, we didn't know we were getting Richard out of the gate. So the character was very developed. And then it was like, once we got him, we were like, oh, okay. And we made a couple adjustments and it just fit like a glove. But um, one of the big inspirations for me personally for this game, there was, a, there was this exercise they had us do early on, like what the PR and marketing, and they do this canvas thing. And they asked me like, what are, we, what are the like three biggest movies that inspired you for this game? And I said, oh, okay, cool. So the f- first one was uh, A Bronx Tale. I don't know if you've ever seen this movie with Robert De Niro and Chaz commentary it's like this amazing thing he used to do like a stage play in new york before it was a movie and all this and it's about this you know robert de niro plays a bus driver and Chaz plays this gangster on the street corner and then robert de niro has this son that's caught in the middle between them you know he sees his dad busting his hump all the time and he goes and does all this stuff for the gangster and gets a ton of money he's got more money than his dad and all this and then he gets pulled and as you see the kid grow up he starts to really be the split. And we I wanted that idea that Kratos is the hardworking father. He always goes and does the right thing. He's going to do it all this. And then Odin was this guy who's just like, you know, whatever you want, I got you. Like, I got all the glitz. You know, I got a Cadillac. <laughs> oh, yeah. So that was wow. like kind of the vibe that I wanted. Oh, wow. I to about also splitting him like almost like a New York chess hustler, you know, where you'd sit down with this unassuming old man mm. and then like all of a sudden you just emptied your pockets playing chess and you don't know what happened. You know, so those things kind of came together and then when we got shift to come on board it was like instantly it clicked for what we wanted to do now not everyone likes that take you know that's the 
when you go out on a limb like that. But not yeah. everybody like Baldur. Well, the other two movies. You know, they thought he was too, you know, odd uh, for what they thought he was going to be. But again, it goes to those personalities. People like, didn't like Baldur. Like, Baldur being a little unhinged just because he didn't feel anything. Yeah. So with the true kind of like, I guess I say that loosely true because we only know so much about these characters. You know, he was he was this wandering guy, Odin. He wandered everywhere. And he would do anything for knowledge, you know, like scoop out his eye, like stab a spear in his head, hang himself from a tree, you know, whatever it took. So he's not going to be the grand warrior. He'd get other people to do what he needed to do and he could push, you know, with words. And so that's what we really wanted. And that's why when he first comes in, we just wanted that instant, like, you know who I am. No introduction required. Yeah. And just, <laughs> and just taking everything in that scene. Everybody's respectful, but he's just like pulls a stool, drinks all everything, you know, just just whatever. He just runs stuff, and that's the vibe that we want to have. And then when we have that first little, what we call the nickel tour, when the kid shows up and he takes them all around the realms, and he's just like, you know, clicking through and just doing everything. And you're just like, this is wild. Like this guy can be anywhere he wants, whenever he wants. And then that's also some of the reason why you're like, well, how could he be? Oh, that's how he can be two places at once because he can just bounce in and out as he sees fit. So it's like all of it come together and it's all for that storytelling that we, we want to do. We try to leave no stone unturned when it comes to the story. Yeah, so cool. Well, the other two movies. Now, in regards Did you notice to the ravens? Like, are on on his, his arm, yeah, the, the tattoos, tattoos on his yeah. arm. Yeah. If was... you watch through the scenes, you'll know which one's out and which one isn't because they, they actually match 100%. Like when both birds are out, he doesn't have them. If one, he's good. Oh, you know, it's oh my God. just the little details like that. I was like noticing Did you the... like his hat? <laughs> oh, yeah. That was my favorite. It's Christmas hat. My team hated that. I was like, no, it'll make him even more unassuming. They're like, we hate this dumb hat. I was like, I love it. It looked like Jason Biggs and Loser. <laughs> Beyond. Um, no, I was looking at like just the the the, te- the texture of the tattoos as just like a slight scar tissue to it, which is just like. I don't know. That's. But I hope they ask about. It's different like, from just like having some lines drawn on something. About yeah, something. Very, very so I hope they ask it was on Raf, uh, our art director, man, you know, he's, he's sleeved up on both sides. Like, so like, if you have anybody do the tattoos, right, he knows what's up. And every single character, he painstakingly went through. And if there's anything that needs to be said on him or the I hope symbols, he asks like, about everything Ramir being wrong about a lot of things. to just be aesthetically pleasing. That's one thing it's I really want to ask him. I think, I think Raph Corsetti has the best fan art on Twitter, like, period. Like, he's... His, he's it's <laughs> obscene. Yeah, he like, does. Oh, man. I don't know if, if you... There's a little uh, Instagram called Specky and Spana. <laughs> My wife's running it because she's putting pictures of our dogs because that was an inspiration for the names. But Raph made uh, a sculpt of a tray like hugging the two wolves and, on a piece of birch wood and had the team sign it. And I took it home and my wife took it out of the box and it was just like water where she was just bawling. It's like, it's what he does. He just, with his art, just makes you just emotionally crack. I, uh, I, got, a, I got a kitten during the pandemic and God of War 2018 was just so important to me. Like I named him Atreus. So like my kitten is Atreus. Aww. So like I, he, you know, runs around, he gets into stuff. I just yell boy and, and he responds <laughs> and it's so great. Uh, after Ragnarok, I'm trying to convince my partner to get a puppy so I can name him Finn so I can have them together awesome. because like that is what I or want. You get another cat and get Loki in Atreus. That's true. I, the only reason why I didn't, um, I haven't thought about doing that is because uh, I have a friend who, our previous host, yeah. Jonathan Dornbush, he, his dog is named Loki. So I was oh, like, okay. okay, so I was like, I can't do Loki because there's too close of a friendship or like he's too close to me to, to like sure. have the same pet name. But um, there were, there were a lot of animals in this, which yeah. I was really fond yeah. of. And I, I feel like it's <laughs> kind of, it, it, it's not, it was never like cutesy, but it like, it definitely borders on like, it's it's more in a direction of sort of fantasy and folklore that I feel like is kind of at odds with the sort of you know aggro like epic stuff. Yeah, it uh, was one of the things that we wanted to change up because we wanted the last game to be very grounded, <clears throat> and then when we had some of those high fantasy moments, but the character the cast was so tight you couldn't have too many of them. As the cast expanded, we were like, oh, we should do this as well so we can see more of the world. Uh, in Vanaheim, if you look carefully, you can see the little baby Charlies. The little turtles with a tree in their Yes, back. I saw yeah, them. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't yeah, know those yeah, were yeah, yeah. meant to be like baby turtles. Oh, yeah. really I didn't make that though. connection. Turtles. Holy I, shit. I love the, That's uh, crazy. I think in Muspelheim, there's like the little fire, uh, the little like fire squirrels. Where there's, yeah, yeah. there were squirrels, yep. Um, I love the little uh, mushroom people that we had in uh, Vanaheim. Yeah, those were drinks. <laughs> yeah, it was, it's like, just, it was just one of those things, again, like the art direction for the game that Raph came up with, like it's, it's the central goal is called mythical realism. Like that's what we're shooting for all the time. And that's completely comprised of Norse mythology influences, classical fantasy, and then historical detail. They use those three as the pillars. And then so 
we wanted to push the classical fantasy a lot more now. Like the Norns are like our ode to the Dark Crystal, you know, like they're very inspired by that type of stuff. And, um, you know, like, who doesn't like animals? It's funny though, because I've seen some people being like, if I save one more animal in this game, I'm like, what's wrong with you as a human being? I don't understand. This, so. <laughs> did you, uh, did you mocap a yak? <laughs> if we could have, we would have, but we, no, we did not. <laughs> Speaking of, go, Yala, go ahead. Yala, Yala's awesome though. She's one of my favorite characters. I know some people don't, or Jotunheim is a very decide, divisive level. Um, mm-hmm. Either you're in or you're not. And yeah. uh, we knew that, but it was very important to us for Atreus. Like that tells that tale. Like we wanted it to be that, you know, when you first, you're like, when's curfew? Oh, 10 p.m.? It's 10 17. <laughs> already in trouble so <laughs> 2 a.m it is you know what i mean just like milk it for all it's worth and we really wanted you to have that feeling and so um you know but y'all was part of that as well sorry yeah, you're gonna ask a question oh yeah like i was gonna bring up that level and like because it's the first time you do take control of atreus um and i think the first time i took control i was like okay uh i'm gonna be doing combat probably uh, i wonder what this combat's gonna feel like uh and it was like more engaging than I expected because I thought I would just be shooting arrows the whole time, and I was like, I just I don't really. Oh want to yeah, Trace's gameplay. So, <laughs> so, good. so good. Uh, can you talk a little bit about like how you designed a Trace as combat? Because you know, yeah, I think it was really surprising for a lot of players. Yeah, um, Hayato, our uh, like companion lead, essentially, he he was responsible for Atreus last game, like as the companion. So the logical step was like, okay, Hayato, can you make him playable? <laughs> And he goes, oh boy, here we go. <laughs> so, you know, and they kept asking them, so like, give him a sword, give him a club, give him a... I was like, dude, just have him hit him with the bow. I just want him to have the bow. They're like, nobody wants to hit anything with a bow. I was like, <laughs> we'll put magic on it. It'll be great. Some people just don't like it. I get it, you know, but it's... I really... I want to give him room to grow. And if mm-hmm. you give him all this stuff out of the gate, and then, again, it's like, well, where do you go from there? It, it doesn't leave anybody, mm-hmm. like, a good license to do stuff. So you want to kind of stay constrained, just like we stayed constrained with Kratos last time. It acts for 50% of the game, right? Yep. So it was the same idea. We said, okay, just apply the same lessons we learned with Kratos to Atreus this time for the escalation of him. But he's going to have a lot of people around him. So the idea was, even though you're playing as him, you should always feel like the companion. Mm. Mm. That's why you know, he doesn't tell a lot of people what he's not going to tell Thor what to do. So right. Thor's not going to be on square button. <laughs> hey, Thor, break things. Right. <laughs> you know, shut up. You know, he just smacks you across the level. All right. So that's what we wanted to be. So like when he's with people his own age, they should feel like they're teen. With when he's with people that are older than them, it's kind of like you know, with, like when he's with Thor, you feel like you're the companion. Even you feel like you're you're Robin to Batman. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because yeah. Thor's just mashing on people, right? So. I love that line, right? Like, he may be playable, but he's still a companion, right? You can't make him as crazy. That That's a great fucking line, dude. Great line. And Thor not... You can't control Thor with the square button because Thor is Thor is a main character and Trace is a companion. Yeah, I, 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 I love I love listening to this shit. That really whole do. idea there we wanted to have is like them... You know, come together. These two kids that I haven't really seen kids before to get to hang out and be kids together. So him and Anger Boda having that moment. Um, I shouldn't say moment, but that that level itself yeah. is, is, was very important to me because it's. I think it gets lost on people nowadays, like that you can't take the time to just go and be with someone and spend just do s- silly things that don't matter, and or your brain's so far away from that as an adult that you can't remember what that was like. It's funny. My, my thing about that whole Anger Boda section is uh, I, I loved it when it first started, when I put that part of my first playthrough out there finally. I loved it when it first started, but for me, like after like, you know, <laughs> the two hour mark, <laughs> I was like, yo, I'm getting sleepy, man. I'm, I was actually getting tired. I think I was playing for like seven hours at that point, and that just knocked the energy out of me. And I'll, I'll admit it, you know. Um, I loved Anger Boda as a character. I think she's cool as fuck. Just for me, I, I, I just fell asleep. Because a lot of people are like, well, they wouldn't do that or that. Why is this character doing it? Like, dude, you know what it's like to be 14? Because you do some dumb stuff when you're 14 <laughs> for some dumb reasons. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I spent a lot of time just perfecting the rock throw, the rock skipping part. Oh, did you? I spent a lot of time, like, until I hit the clam and, like, the second or third rock skipping part. Did you find part. the optional one at the end? The, I is did. it the it's yep. not the one right before the is it the one where the like you're about to go on Yala and then the like inc- or you're about to grab the rock and then the encounter happens? 
No, like back at the treehouse, there's another set of rocks. You can just go skip them to your heart's content. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa, yeah, there yeah. is? Okay. I thought there was like another, another one with that. Like, like, I, need to go back. I mean, I do need to go back, but. Um, I got a trophy. Yeah, it's cool. yeah. he, he gets angry at some no. point, too. So you do get mm-hmm. to have a little yeah. bit of square well, again, action. Again, even that, we try to subvert expectations where you're like, oh, he's getting a sword. But it's like, no, it's a sentient sword that fights on our Yeah. And, you're like, God. and then you fall in love with that. I feel like he's calling me out, man. Yeah. Kind of all the things I grew up on. I was like, oh, shit, we got a sword. You know, like. The magic carpet from Aladdin, all these things, all in one. That Dr. sword was sick as like, fuck, though. These are influences on us, and the sword was already known to be sentient. So we we're like, oh, like, why would we have him hold it? That's like a waste of a character, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's why we went down that road. But going back to the rot skipping moment, that was the one that for a long time people were like, dude, you gotta get rid of this. This is like, it's a lot of work. I was like, no, it's amazing. Like this is like, I did this as a kid. Sorry, we're putting this in. And then some uh, one of the guys working on it did the whole thing where you, if you got it perfect, you would hit the, the clam. clam and yeah. get the little bonus. And I was yeah. like, there, perfect. You know, so. <laughs> Can we talk a little bit about your personal history with God of War? Because you've been you've been here since the, the ground floor. Yeah, I um, started in 2004 on God of War 1. Uh, the first thing they gave me to do was the Cerberus puppy. Um, <gasps> that was my first character that I worked on. And uh, I got it to scale and grow into the big Cerberus and then vomit up little baby ones and that whole thing. And people hate that enemy for that reason. No. Um, but then I got uh, started working on Kratos. And by the end of that project, I was running Kratos um, with Corey as the animator. And then um, Corey was tapped to be the director on God of War 2. And so we saddled up with him and I built Kratos on that game. And we laid down the foundation for God of War 3 early on, all the kind of behind the scenes. And then Stig took over and... That game is absolutely incredible. He crushed that. Yeah, he did. Um, and I became a consultant at that time, so I was working with a lot of different studios. But Ready at Dawn, I just spun up uh, Chains of Olympus. Or actually, they were finishing it. They were about maybe eight months out. And Santa Monica asked me to go down there and look at that. And I met Rue and Dana and that crew, uh, Tony Vitale and all those amazing people down at Ready at Dawn. And we worked on that game together. It was super fun. And then when they said they were going to do a sequel, and Corey wrote Ghost of Sparta, and I went down and worked on that with them. And then they called me back for Ascension <laughs> to work on some monsters. And then 2018 was kind of the special moment. I remember we were at GDC, and Shannon Studstill, and she was the studio head at the time, she called and said, hey, you got to come out to dinner tonight. And I said, oh, I'm busy. i got things to do. She's like, no, no, no. You owe me. you got to come out to dinner. And I said, all right, I'll meet you. And I can't remember where we went, but I walked everywhere in San Francisco. So I was walking there, and then she was waiting out front, and I saw her. And I was like, what's going on? And then this, I turned around and this cab was there and Barlog got out. And I was like, oh, I know what's going on. Ah, to back together. There so we go. Out of war. And sure enough, that's what that conversation was that night. And everything kind of was a launching pad from there. Eric deserves and it. Then, he uh, really does. I hope yeah, at the end of 2018, maybe well, Bruno the end, was the Corey next was like, I'm tired. Right. I don't want to do another one. I need a break. I need to see my family. He goes, will you do it? And it took him about six months to convince me, you know, because I've always been kind of behind the scenes person and not really into the limelight this stuff like this is difficult for me to do but um it worked out <laughs> now I, I i gotta say that uh uh i think i think eric crushed it like you know being a director for the very first time and uh you know Corey's like i need a break i, I think that uh uh I, I think eric did a, a fantastic job right especially a game this size this huge and this with so much high expectations i i think eric did a fantastic job like no matter what you know he told himself because he just said it took him six months to finally accept. You know, I think whatever, you know, he told himself, I think he could finally, like, laugh at himself because he fucking crushed it. I, I just got to say that. Nice. I think he fucking Game, uh, crushed it. good. Can we, <laughs> can we grill you now? We got I'm glad you kicked his own ass. Make you horribly uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, sure. Can we grill you for your favorite moments from each of the God of War games? From, yes, oh, you can. Wow, you're really going to test my memory, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, God of War 1. Uh, just because it's near and dear to me and it almost got cut from the game and it is one of the softer moments for Kratos is the hug. Uh, during the Ares boss fight when you're in the dream sequence yes, and you sir. get to hug the mother and the mm-hmm. daughter to give your life back to them while you fight off your evil demons. Uh, let's see, God of War 2. I'm just going to do all my selfish ones. Uh, cl- the entire Colossus of Rhodes. That was a gnarly boss oh, battle man. to build. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was awesome. I was probably one of the things I'm most proud of that, that I got to work on. Um, Mark Aline and Nate Stevens were the level environment artists on that and just so many amazing people to put that thing together that was also the inspiration for the uh garm fight in this game mm-hmm. we call that yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, yeah in my playthrough um, i said the like, same exact really thing i was like Yo, this shit gives me god of war 2 vibes <laughs> uh, i said the same thing god of war 3 sorry uh, let's see <laughs> sorry yeah there's so many good ones in that game 
I think Hermes. it's the, the Hermes, Hermes. thing they had in the trailer because we never got the, it to work right in God of War 2. We tried it. We called it dog pile moment where all the skellies jump on top of you. And then Kratos does the huge moment where they all just burst out when he goes into rage. That's just a, like, I mean, it's like a comic book cover shot. You yeah. Know? It's absolutely incredible. Um, let's see. Ascension. The ending of Ascension There's, got me. That one's a, a wild game because it's like, do you do the multiplayer stuff? <laughs> do you do the mm. main game? Um, but the, I think the Pollux fight is really cool. Like, it's got all the time stuff going on, and, and it, there, that's, a, that's a great moment in that game. Uh, Chains of Olympus. Calliope. I think the... Man, I'm trying to think this. Oh, there's a this is just again a silly one, but there's a there's a box push in the Morpheus dream cloud that like always mm-hmm. trips people up. <laughs> that I just oh, like watching yeah, people yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. S- stagger around in. I don't know why. I know what that's like about. it's terrible because it's watching people suffer, but I really like that one for some reason. Yeah, box push? There's like you yeah. gotta push this thing and it's on fire and it moves the dream out of the way, and people just get confused and it's but and it seems so straightforward. It's one of those things as a designer where you're like, just do what we want you to do. <laughs> um, <laughs> But people won't do it, and then you're always like scratching your head. It always sticks with me for that reason because I go back to it to remember like why aren't people? You know, it's it's one of those. So again, these are, these are for games. really weird reasons. This is, I'm not, not answering this reason, in, a, yeah. in, a, in a good way. No, um, that's, that's, that's great. It, yeah. Ghost of Sparta is the carrying Demos's body up the cliff mm-hmm. to the barrel. Because I'll be honest, like that was one thing yeah. I pitched a long time ago for a different sequence, but I was like really wanted to get that in, and, and Corey wrote it in, and Dana, and then really embraced that idea, and I just. I just think it's just really powerful that you that could have been a cutscene and you get to do it and it's a really cool moment 2018 is a very simple moment that a lot of people may not remember but there's a, a bit where the kid lights this lantern and it flies up oh, in the flies sky it up. Yeah, yeah. it's such a just very poignant piece of storytelling that to me embodies that entire game you know it's like the kid has all this wonder and innocence about him and Kratos is watching this unfold and really doesn't know how to connect with him yet to like appreciate that and do it with him. Yeah. You know, this Kratos might light the lantern with him. But he didn't, you know. And then uh Ragnarok, mm. whole game. Because <laughs> he directed it. Yeah. 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 Awesome. He directed yeah. it. <laughs> I love listening. Akeem Lawanson, one of our castmates, couldn't actually be here today, but he did prepare a little bit of a, a video, and we're gonna uh, we want you to show that he actually has a question for you. But Akeem, take it away. Now, I know what y'all are thinking. I look like a hipster Kratos that's going into the woods to cut down a bunch of trees. Like, I'm gonna roast myself before y'all get a chance to do so. Anyways, I've been playing like God it. of War Ragnarok. I, like I got some it. thoughts I want to share about God of War Ragnarok with the rest of the crew and you all watching and listening at home. I've been playing God of War Ragnarok for about 11 hours now, playing side by side Thor as Atreus. Uh, watching the jiggle physics in Thor's belly, and I came to the realization that, uh, <laughs> uh, just being lost in his belly, that God of War Ragnarok's take on Norse mythology is way better than most. I mean, let's take a look at what Marvel has done with characters like Oh, come Thor, on! Hold on, 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 now, that ain't the Thor from the mythical history books Jesus of Norway Christ. that I've been reading, and I read a lot of them. Now, while I've never been a <laughs> God huge damn fan it. or a big fan or even a small fan of mythological figures in the MCU, I do have to applaud their inclusion in the overall Marvel Cinematic Universe. I, I'll, I'll bend the knee to that, because in some instances, the MCU has managed to acknowledge a few elements from the mythological source material. Like Loki, for example, was an Jesus amazing Christ. Disney Plus series. Stop we showing clips to from stuff. Variants of Loki. <laughs> now, in Norse mythology, it doesn't matter if it's just Loki's a trailer, you can still get hit render for him it. quite malleable, meaning he can take on various different forms. But God of War Ragnarok was and is far superior in its overall just presentation of everything. As we see Loki shape-shifting into different animals. And it's freaking awesome. It's awesome. Now, another cool thing about Loki in the video game, now there's a mission where you're Atreus, AKA Loki, and you have to run around finding fragments and pieces of this wooden mask that's awfully similar to the one that Stanley Ipkiss wore in the mask movie and comics. And in that particular franchise, the mask 
Loki was the creator of the zany mask that imbued Jim Carrey's character with all those crazy powers. Now, whether or not the writers at Santa Monica are just big Dark Horse Comics fans and fans of the Mask movie and wanted to, you know, kind of throw that into their take on Loki's story in Ragnarok is honestly a question I'd have to ask them. I'm curious to ask them that question. But either way, you know what? It's nice to see them throw that into the mix and make it meaningful to the lore being told in the video game. Now, God of War Ragnarok and its take on Norse mythology is honestly unparalleled, unmatched, and the storytelling has been on point so far. Now, Thor and Loki in the MCU just can't touch God of War Ragnarok's take on those two characters. Not by a long shot. And if you, that's right, you watching and listening, don't agree with me, then I'll throw down my Leviathan axe and have you challenge my stance. Unfortunately, He's unlike very Kratos, my Leviathan axe will never come back to me, no matter how much I put my hand out to try to grab it. He's very it's entertaining. Me, but I, there I is wish one I thing that, that I can throw entertainment value. it back to you all in the studio. What was Beyond. the question? Beyond, boy, beyond, boy, beyond. Right. What was his question? Well done, Akeem. Uh, <laughs> so the mask. Very, very uh, is it inspired by Jim Carrey's The Mask? I'm sure if I said yes, we'd get in legal trouble. Um, but I don't think it was 100%. I, I think I told him I wanted it to be wood because <laughs> we wanted to carve things into it. Uh, it was more about what the carvings were. Like, there's carvings from different languages on the mask mm -hmm. uh, when you look at it up close. Uh, but um, if there's some kind of thing, maybe somebody snuck something in I didn't even know about. But uh, I don't think it's... It's the, it's the monomyth, you know? It's yeah. the Joseph Campbell stuff. Everything ah, yes. is drawn from some Jim Carrey movie. Yeah, just, it's, is that how it goes now? Probably it's been, yeah, been yeah, retconned. Yeah. Some, it's, it's somebody a, stop you. You've hit you from the mask. <laughs> <laughs> they both have the same initials. It's just like you replace Joseph Campbell with Jim Carrey now. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. No, if you look closely, it says smoking on the top of the mask. Yeah. Smoking <laughs> hero's journey. Uh, Eric, thank you so much for joining us. This oh, has thanks, been a huge oh, that's blast. It? Um, uh -huh. God of Ragnarok is obviously um, worth the wait. It's an epic game. You've been hard at work, and, uh, you know, huge congrats to you and the whole team for making it. And thanks for coming by and, and uh, you know, hanging out with us. Thanks for having me. It's been yeah, awesome. Of course. Oh, uh, for those of you watching at home, you can find us all on Twitter. I'm Max Scoville. Josh is Dude Josh. Jada is Jade Arena. Eric, are you on Twitter, Instagram, anything you want to plug? Nope. Go buy God of War Ragnarok. It's in store for your for your PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5 console. Oh, shit. There, that's something you can plug. Yeah. Anyway, um, while, you're, while we're plugging things, you can check out IGN Rewards. It is a free thing. Go sign up on IGN. You get discounts and stuff oh, like that. Man, There's also sucks, IGN Plus, it. which gives you the ad-free version and all sorts really of other bells and whistles. Eric talk, man. And on that, beyond. I was really enjoying Eric talk, man. I, I gotta say, um, I I love listening to like the, especially when I did my interview with Corey and Eric. A lot of it was me asking, you know, trying to get to know them as people, um, because I I love hearing these people just just kind of talk. I I just love it, man. Um, let me put it on the big screen. So, um, everyone, if you're in the chat, let me know what you all think about everything that we just saw. Um. VGS, my man, says uh, the biggest thing has to be the animations that Tierra does. Tiza was giving like Tai Chi, a Chinese relaxation art. Yeah, it, it's very, it's very curious. Um, I love that part. So let's break it down. What do you guys want to talk about? What are some parts that really like stuck out to you? And um, for me, it was the whole tier thing. Like VGS said, how he said Tier is doing very specific things that might lead into the future of these games. What's gonna happen? Um. I personally think, and I made a video on it, and I'll release that video in like uh, two two days from now. I have a video plan for tomorrow. I have a video plan for the next day, and they're in the works currently. Uh, but yeah, I think that Atreus tier because tier is still technically Atreus's hero, even though he didn't really meet him. Um, Anger Boda, Skjolder, uh, third, um, all these characters are gonna be in the sequel together. Um, the serpent as well. Um, that's not the mask from the movie, The Ma the Mask. It's not. <laughs> he said no, but in a very nice way. Who blew the horn? I blew the horn. Uh, John Ford, do you want a DLC? I hope we get DLC. Um, that thing, that's so cool, man. Uh, there's a part that Eric said it took him six months to accept the job. I think Eric did, like, a fantastic job of directing. You know, I think people are more capable of things that they truly, th that they truly, People are capable of so much more, more than so much more than they think that they are, and I think Eric, even though it took him a while to accept, um, I think that the fact that they chose him, I think people saw what he was capable of before even he knew, and I'm glad he, I'm really glad he kicked his own ass on that, yo. He really beat himself, and whatever thoughts he was telling himself, um, 
I'm, I'm, I'm glad that, that, you know, he beat himself, basically. Uh, I really like the artifacts from other realms. Yeah, man, me too. Um, I love artifacts. Uh, I think everything, uh, artifact-wise was really well done. I have to agree with that. Uh, there's another spoiler cast? Where? Where is there another spoiler cast? Thoughts on Kratos and Thor's relationship? Uh, I think it was really well done, but in a very subtle way. Um, I wish that it was... I think it was fucking perfect, to be honest with you. Um, I think that... Uh, I think Thor, he related to Kratos first. He's like, we are destroyers! Um, and at the end, Kratos did, did relate to him, and that's all I wanted for me. It was perfectly done. Um, I love their relationship with one another. I really... I, I truly do. I'm not trying to, like, just to say that, just to say that. No, I think Eric did a fantastic fucking job, people. I, I truly believe that. Uh, well, what else you guys saying? Someone else said there's another spoiler cast. Uh, I don't know where, though. Uh, Eric Williams spoiler cast. On well, kind of oh, kind of funny games. This weekend. Uh, do you guys want to watch kind of funny games with spoiler cast? Uh, it's been a while since I've been on their channel, actually. Uh, should we do another one? There are three. I, I only I watch one more with you guys if you guys want to watch it. There's one more. Sp I found it. Uh, you probably heard it in the background here. I put I put a poll in the chat. Do you guys want to watch another spoiler cast? I wouldn't mind if you guys are down for it. I'll put it in the chat. Let's see. We'll have the chat stay up for like three minutes. Or like two minutes, I guess. Uh, how do I do polls again on this fucking shit? Here we go. Start a poll. Do you want to do another... Watch another spoiler cast? Yes or no? I'm down, 100%. I love listening to him talk, yo. I really, truly do. Uh, I have the poll last for a minute. If you're in the chat right now, make sure to vote. I'll, I'll leave it for uh, 1 minute and 30 seconds. Where's my phone? I'll time it. So at, uh, yeah, we'll leave for 1 minute. I'm down, 100% I'm down. Go in the chat and vote. Do you think Atreus is taking the mantle? I do. I think that the end was an obvious setup for the future of Atreus, the future of this character. Um, okay, the majority is yes. Okay, okay, okay. Majority is yes. Gotcha. All right, we're going to watch another spoiler cast. I was only planning on doing an hour stream, but we're going to go for another spoiler. Let's go. I'm down. Let's get it. Let me, let me put it on your screen. Let me make sure it's on my screen. Let's go. Uh, uh. Okay. All right, spoiler cast number two. Let's get it. PlayStation, we're only talking about God of War Ragnarok spoilers because this is PSI Love You XOXO. <laughs> I haven't been on this channel in so long, man. I don't want to watch kind of funny too often. And I, to be honest, I'm not even subscribed to IGN. Welcome to the show, everybody. I'm Greg. That's Andy. That's yelling? Tim. That's Blessing. And that's God of War Ragnarok game director Eric Williams. <laughs> Eric, that was stunning eye contact. I want you to know. 
You're a professional at the eye contact. I'm trying. Okay. <laughs> I appreciate it. Of course, this is PSI Love You XOXO. You can watch us record it live on patreon.com slash kind of funny where you can get every episode ad free and get 38 episodes of bonus exclusive content. Of course, if you have no bucks to toss our way, it's no big deal. Support us on the Epic Game Store with the creator code kind of funny when you're playing Fortnite, Fall Guys, Rumbleverse on any platform, maybe your PlayStation 5. You can get PSI Love You XOXO for free with ads and without 38 exclusive of episodes He's over so on youtube.com slash kind of funny games and podcast services around the globe each and every Friday. Thank you to our Patreon producers, Morgan Lorraine, Fargo Brady, Christopher Rodriguez, uh, the kind of funny Destiny 2 PC clan, Tall Tree 81, okay. Joseph All right. One Up Pest Control, Carrie Palmer, Intel, Mind Freak, Eric Velasquez, Scotty Wyatt, uh, Alex Gray, is in shop all by yourself. You went into the back end, you made oh, some yeah. rocks, you smashed them together, you made this. Beep, boop, beep, boop. But it's out now. And it's been out by the time people see this even longer. We've had your opening weekend. By the time this goes up, obviously, I've had two weeks under the belt pretty much. What does that relief feel like? I don't know. I mean, it's like we're done with the game. My <laughs> 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 man, Eric, it just feels like we're done. Really entertained. <laughs> no, it feels good, and I did not make the game by myself. There's of course, thousands of people that put their heart and soul into it, and uh, you know, I'm just glad it landed. And it seems like people are liking it. Did you guys enjoy it? Yeah, that's pretty lot, good, man. That's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not we'll bad. That. We'll take that. Not yeah, bad. Okay. Good, good, good. <laughs> Could be good. worse. Here, do me a favor. Bring your mic in a bit closer, oh, closer? and then rotate it just a little bit since you're talking. Like that? Okay. You're crushing it. You're yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Thanks. Um, Tim, where do you want to start? I mean, I just kind of want to start on looking at God of War 2018, jumping to God of War Ragnarok. What were the goals kind of going into it from a story perspective, at least, uh, of, of like what you were trying to achieve differently than the first one? Uh, it's a hard answer or hard question to answer because we weren't really trying to do too much different in terms of like the story because it wasn't done. You know, it's like, you don't want to be like, Oh yeah, by the way, you liked all that stuff. And no, we're just not going to address any of that and just move on to something completely different. So we needed to figure out a way to, you know, build upon what was there and then also add, you know, new stuff because that's what you need for your story to progress forward. So I think the real key was like coming up with, you know, are we going to do it in two or three games, which we sat and de debated quite a bit. And then finally we got to a place where we were like, okay, two's gonna be it. And then the bar log made the final call. So once that's done, <laughs> you know what you're doing. And the it, final boss. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's, he's definitely the final boss. Uh, then um, he gave me like three guidelines uh, that had to be met. I hope he's not and just he gonna says, say the same thing as the happen. last one. The kid's gotta leave at the end and Brock's gotta die. Damn, and wow. Once, he's what doing Brock like that. that. Yeah. Or what's his beef with Brock? <laughs> He's the family dog, as we say. <laughs> so that's what's going to hurt the most. Um, but once we were given that, it was pretty much free reign. And then it was like he would check in every now and again because he was off doing whatever he was doing. Sure. And, Nobody knows. You know, he's just, I don't know, I think he was sleeping a lot, to be honest. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it was cool because we have good trust between each other. We've worked together for over 20 years. I wish I was one of these people, so man. He would I check really in. Do. He'd be like, yeah, that's cool. I think that might be a little weird. You know, he's like, yeah. why is Kratos going to sleep all the time? I was like, don't worry, it all makes sense. <laughs> uh, you got to keep the one shot. You're like, we're keeping yeah, yeah, the one yeah. shot. Don't worry, we figured but, it out. Was that difficult to do? Because that was one of the things that stood out to me, right? We're playing God of War 2018. I think so many of us were, you know, very uh, obsessed with the one shot. We we're like, oh, man, how, how in the world did they pull, pull this off? And also, like, shout out to how well this grants such a good cinematic presentation to the game. And this one, since God of War Ragnarok, is going for a bit more in scope and doing all these different things. And now that we can finally talk about it, right? Like, you're playing as Atreus, you're uh, talking to different people, you're meeting so many different characters. Was that ever a thing where it was like, uh, do we have to do the one shot the whole time? Like, how do we simulate sleep? How do we simulate going to different places? Yeah, I mean, I had people, the day they said, you know, oh, he's going to direct, you know, like some people are already coming by, like, we're not going to do that dumb camera thing again. Right? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, you're doing it. it it's like, doing it. <laughs> yeah, we're going to do it. So <laughs> they all walk away sad, you know. <laughs> Looks like that old Hulk, you know, when he's walking down the road yeah, by himself. Yeah, kind of thing. yeah exactly. <laughs> but um, we kind of reframed it as a problem of like, okay, how can we push it? How can we do things that would make people go, whoa, what's going on right now? Yeah, mm -hmm. which I did many times. Like, right? Any of the, like, the water scenes where it's like going underneath the water, I was so impressed. Yeah, mm -hmm. so like the, the we call those things psychocines because they kind of mess with your psychology of what's about to happen with the transitions. These things are usually reserved for like you know, psychological thrillers, movies, things like this. So 
But like with the one shot, like how do we embrace that? How do we take it forward? And we wanted to come right out of the gate with one of those as well. So that's why we have the, the dream sequence where you see the hand slip in on him. Yeah. And, mm. and you're like, whoa, what's going on here? And then he gets up and you're like there. And then, you know, she puts the hand on the face, and yeah. goes back and you're in the bed and you're like, what the hell just happened? And it kind of catches you off guard, but it's like in a good way where you're like kind of pleasantly surprised by what's going on. We would have set that tone early and then some of the transitions we do later on were along those lines as well. well was there any back and forth in early on in the game when you first meet uh, Thor? And when that character is introduced, there are some jump jump cuts that happen where it is like, kind of like they show... They're not you know, cuts. They're not cuts? It's lightning flashing. It's uh, strobe, okay. strobe light. Okay. Because I had yeah. theories. Because I was like, <laughs> I, I think, you know, early on when we didn't know what was going to happen in the game, right? I think there were a lot of, there was a lot of back and forth with, with us of like, what happens to Kratos? You know, does Kratos die? Does Thor kill Kratos and then you get passed on it? Atreus, like I'm sure, I'm sure you guys like <laughs> looked at all of the conversation going on online with that. As soon as I saw it just that, laughed and laughed. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I saw the cuts, I was like, Thor's gonna kill Kratos. Like this is what this is what it's gonna. Oh really? Be. Yeah. That? Legitimately, I was like, oh, this is how it's gonna go. Hmm. No, I, I didn't for a second think that. Blessing, you're crazy. No. You're out of your yeah. mind. They would never do that. Um, I, are we gonna see any behind the scenes of? Any of those weird cine, what, what did you call them? Psycho cines. Psycho cines, like, because yeah. I, I would love to just see, like, the developer camera brought back and just to see all the props kind of moving into place. That I, shit seems so interesting. I can't remember if there's an episode based on those solely, because we have this series that comes out every Tuesday. There'll be another one tomorrow. That'll be my one plug for today. Watch <laughs> that. Watch that. <laughs> you get to see the, the team, you know, that, that's making them. Uh, I think that's episode five. And then there's five more that are coming. So I'm going to say this right now in this one, too. There is no Raising Kratos Part 2. Oh, so sorry. No, it's all my fault. I, I, was like, on Twitter. I was like, look, we got enough to contend with. I don't need cameras all over the place. Plus, COVID made it a much more difficult mm -hmm. thing. Well, it's just, you know, there's some true. people who want to let the game speak for themselves. And then there's other people who want to make themselves into some kind of weird celebrity. Right? I don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I personally just don't like a lot of distraction. Um, sure. And if to me, it was just like one more thing I piled on top of already. A lot of stuff to do. I like with, you know, pressure of sequel follow-up. Me first time, team readjusting to me. You know, I just didn't want to put anybody in a kind of awkward position. I was like, let's just go make this game and put everything we can into it. I respect so that. That's I respect why, that so I a lot. I apologize all the people out there really um, wanted that. But we do have this little 10 part behind the scenes series for that very reason. And that way you can. Um, my thoughts on that it's like, you know, every God of War game kind of has this documentary style, like from God of War 1 to Chains of Olympus. All the God of War games uh, has it, with God of War 2018 was Raising Kratos. Um, but Eric Williams said here that we just didn't want the distractions. It's my first time, and I get it. But they do kind of have that series, which is basically the same thing. So maybe I'll make a video of me putting everything together and just calling it "Raising Kratos Part 2, but not or something stupid like that. But um, I, I'm I'm hoping that would be okay if they would let me do that. But I'm not sure. But I'm it's okay if they didn't do it. It makes sense. Quite a few already. If you've been watching, I hope you've been watching. How? Uh, and I know he did say earlier why there's no deal Mjolnir? with the pressure you're talking about. He did talk about that earlier in the stream. Like God of War 2018, because any game that's a sequel, I imagine, okay, cool, we have to be bigger, better, bad, or whatever. But like God of War 2018 is such a revered title, and it is such an instant classic masterpiece, 10 out of 10. Like, are you excited to be the director when they turn and say that to you? Like, I mean, oh, now cool. I'm feeling the pressure all over again when you say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> you did it. You, that. You're, you're you killed it, bro. You fucking um, killed it. I always look at it more like it's a responsibility. Like, I've been with the franchise since 2004, so you do not want to be the person that messes it up. Yeah. But also, there's a lot of people that their jobs rely on this. Like, you, you can't bomb a game like this. For like sure. You have to be in the pocket. And, you know, also, there's just that chip on your shoulder that, you know, it's like, my buddy can do it. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing it a long time with him. Can I do it too? So there was a lot of that, like kind of all mixed together. And everybody in the team took it differently. Like some people, the pressure was almost unbearable. Yeah. You know, to live up to, to that hype. And other people just kind of like move through it. And, you know, you have to kind of figure out a way to like bite size the project. And because if you just look at it as a whole, you're like, this is impossible. Why, why would anybody even give us money to try this, let alone yeah. actually try to succeed at it? So you have to figure out ways to get the team to buy into little concepts here and there, and then you get a little bit of wins, and then, you know, once you get enough wins in the win pile, you're like, okay, we might have something. We're feeling ourselves. Yeah, yeah and the okay. play test feedback starts to come back, and you're like, okay, this half sucks, but over here, we're getting some wins. Mm. Let's now focus on that and try to get that up, and then you get to a place where you're like, okay, this might work, that might work, 
Um, and it's, and, and I'm making it sound like kind of dumb and silly, but no, it's, no, it's no, 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 so you're not. intricate. Like all the pieces we get into, we would take the entire show just to walk you through like one of those things like you were talking about. We could spend an hour just talking about that, like yeah. all the little pieces that went into it and how it was done, storyboards, you know, blocking on the set, making sure everybody lands at the right time. Then you get it off to the teams that are going to take all that data, bring it to life. Then you get to get audio in there. Bear's got to go in and score it. You know, it's just so many pieces. Then to seamlessly move in and out of it because of the one-shot camera in the game where it feels like butter, where you're like, I can't tell where the gameplay and cinematics end. Yeah. Like it just on and on and on and on and on. But that's the, the beauty of it to me because what we do in all games, this is every problem you solve, no one has solved before and no one will solve again. <laughs> it's singular. It's, it's in this moment. And if you're on that team, only you do that. And it's like, it's almost like a badge of honor like that. It's like oh, yeah. we made that in that moment and no one will do that ever again. You, you know, one of my favorite things to come from God of War 2018 was Corey's video of him recording himself, seeing the reviews come in for the first time. Mm -hmm. And like this, this moment of realization of, we did it, you know, like, oh my God, it's getting tens. Like, this is wild. And, you know, Greg referring to like the pressure for you to like you and the team to do it again. And again, means different and better and all this stuff. Like, was there a moment for you recorded or otherwise, but what of the team of like that realization of, we just did it. We did the thing that everyone was hoping we could do. Yeah. I mean, for us at the studio, we have this big giant wall and there's all these wooden blocks on it of all the team members and all the games that the studio was, has shipped or helped with shipping. And there's always a spot left when a new game comes out. And so we had a you know, little group session. We're all there, and I had the wooden block <laughs> for Ragnarok. and get to put it up there. And then outside my office on the far wall, there's these big, huge, I don't want to say they're like six foot by six foot. They may even be bigger than that, these big murals of the games. Every game Santa Monica's put out. And there's been this blank space for a year staring me in the face you, know? and you, you look out there and it's just like greatness and you want to put one up there and it's almost like when you go to staples and you see all the sure, banners the jerseys, from the yeah, rafters yeah. you know what i mean it's like that kind of it's not even called that anymore is it like I, that shows how oh yeah 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 or the garden right i didn't i didn't want to use the celtics in california but but yeah so I look out there every day, you know, because yeah. it's important to me. There's like, there's a lineage there and you do you not want to be the one that was like, okay, I kind of let it slip. So we put everything into it. And I, I'll be honest, like, I was like, I don't know if they're ever going to let me do this again. So I'm leaving you gotta go. nothing, you know, yeah. all in. So. Were, I'm were, were there any moments in development where, obviously it's got to be, I, I couldn't imagine the amount of pressure and just, it would be a nonstop anxiety attack for me of like, God damn, how are we going to do this? But was there were there any milestones you hit where you're like, you know what, we're gonna be okay, we're 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 keeping our heads above water. It's weird because it does happen, but it happens in these little pockets where some of the team doesn't even get to see that. Mm. Like you might have been like, okay, we got the spear animations to a place where like I think it's gonna work. You know, they feel pretty good on the buttons. There's a that musical rhythm is there. That I think that's what makes our weapons stand apart. Is like you can almost like feel yeah, like these sure, rhythms when sure. you're doing. And it was like, okay, cool. But like only the combat team and the animators are seeing that. And even that, it's a small section of them. And you have a whole bunch of people in the team that are not. And they're supposed to believe in this and go do the rest of their work and like make these beautiful spears from the environment art team and make all the weapon components that go with it and everything that goes into the game. So it's weird because it's siloed. Even in the office, it's siloed. But work from home? Oh, man, forget about it. It's like you just, you just lose so much stuff. Like... Like, imagine being able to have a conversation. You guys have, like, lunch every day, right? And talk about all this kind of stuff. And then five days a week, one hour for three years taken away. Yeah. And then hope that all that's going to still come together and people are going to <laughs> But you can, still, yes, you can still deliver on this master. Yeah, yeah right? <laughs> it's, and it's, it's wild to think about that. And that's just the lunch, not counting, like, oh, just wandering by someone's desk or all these things. That's what we were most scared of because, you know, people have been making games for a long time and they have this understanding how it's going to work. And then you just go, oh, by the way, you can't do it like that anymore. Everything you learned, forget about it. You got to figure out all this new stuff. Gotta you got to be on camera know. and you got to, yeah. you know. I mean, our uh, design director, Jason McDonald, would do full playthroughs where he's just narrating all the problems. And then people would have to go through and just strip out the comments and get those into Jerry and get all these people. And man, Jason, thank you so much for doing that because I didn't want to do those all the time. <laughs> like, I was solving other kinds of problems. But that's what it took. It's just people finding new ways to get each other to bond together to make this stuff happen so you guys can play and it to you it should look effortless 
Of course. Oh, yeah. Right. But to us, anything that's effortless requires a shit ton of work. Sure. You know? yeah. so, yeah. I, I want to ask, I, we, we, I, we already kind of got the answer, but I want to hear you say it. Like, do you feel like you did it? Because you did it. I mean, <laughs> yeah, because like, you did it. But like, do you feel like First you did off, it? First off, we did it. Yes, um, yes, yes. The you but being yes, the, the uh, it's, um, It's hard for me because I'm always like looking for what the next thing we're going to do is. So to me, it's like, what are we going to do? Oh, next? we got questions about you know that. What I, mean? like, I can't talk about it because I literally don't know. Like, I don't even know project I'm going to be on in the future. Like, that's how little I, I know. They, I was like, hey, what am I doing next? They're like, we don't know. In working on this Take game, were you guys thinking <laughs> about the, the future? Of course, I don't want to like get too ahead. Oh, I know we're it's always, probably exhausting. We're always but... thinking about the future. Okay. But can, like, I, can I tell you anything? Absolutely not. Finishing this game, it feel, I felt like I was like, oh man, there's like three potential futures I could, I could see here already in terms of where characters end up. That's cool. <laughs> Dang it. So let's talk about really good poker. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about a future you can talk about because it's okay. actually the past. All right. Uh, back in 2018, the one, the only Corey Barlog came through, did a spoiler cast with us for God of War 2018, right? Did. Robert writes in, of course, like you can anytime to kindoffunny.com slash P S I L Y and says, During the God of War 2018 spoiler cast, Corey talks about having to scrap the first draft as they realized they were writing the second game. Is that this game? How much survived the eight years since that draft was conceived? Oh, that's a good question. Somebody's been paying attention. There are bits and pieces of that, but not a lot. The first game was Thor-centric. Okay. Um, that, that they're talking about that was scrapped. So those bits were brought in, but where we've gone since then has changed because when that draft was made, there was no understanding that Atreus was Loki. So that, that draft was wildly out of date and not up to date you know, snuff for what we were going to do moving forward. So, um, and I think he made it talked about this last time he was here, but like, yeah, the whole Loki thing didn't even happen until like two, three years into that project. Like, that's why the, all the, the boy stuff was there because no name. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, and not even like they traced name, but even the Loki was even further out from there. So those things are kind of like little magic moments. Like for this, for instance, on this game, um, the whole idea of like the tier Odin flip was not that way at the beginning. Oh, it was wow. tier, it was tier. And we were going to figure out all that. And then one day I came in, I was like, what if, because we were trying to figure out how Odin would know everything. We didn't want to just be like, well, he's got these, you know, CCTV ravens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of cheesy, you right? Didn't, you didn't kill enough of them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I was like. I was and like, like this moment, right? To have this moment. If yeah. you watch the video of yeah. Tier killing Brock, right? So I, like, you know, I asked Odin. writers, I was like, hey, what if it's Odin the whole time? And they were like, whoa. And it was like, you know, that brain stop moment where it's like, you, we're going to unwind so much if we do this. Yeah. But that's kind of cool. Let's go read. And they went away for like a couple of days. And then they came back and they're like, wait a second, this could work. We'd have to readjust these things. But then it actually put more focus into like who was going to kill Brock, who was going to kill Odin, like all these things, because then it was like the brother's storyline tied in. And it was like, yeah, he's Brock will die. But then Sindri will be the one to take the vengeance because everybody else has grown past needing to exact that yeah. but he's just fresh in it so he'll have to be the one to do it and then it just feels so satisfying when he takes that hammer smashes that marble did you fear that any of the tier being or odin being tier stuff would suffer from like the oh it was all a dream kind of effect that happens in movies sometimes it was all a dream everything you just watched did you fear that no that would be like an easy out or anything like no, that? no absolutely not because we have Awesome writing crew. Yeah. And they were not going to, like, if you go back and look at all the clues, you'll be like, holy shit. They oh, told yeah. us. Yeah. They told us. Dude, but that's the thing. I told were... you in the marketing trailer from 21. <laughs> you just... Go back and watch it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the thing. You know, uh, Barrett, obviously, in the run ones and twos, our producer in there, him and I drive into work, and we both nerd out about God of War, Ragnarok, the entire time of the playthrough. But when I moved on to review other games, he immediately started a new re uh, replay. Mm. And so he was immediately, this is during the review process when, it, when you couldn't go talk to people. And he's like, dude, when this happens, Tyr says this, but when you know it's Odin, it's actually him questioning it. And it's the same thing of like, you know, when Fenrir dies, right? And the pieces come out and he mm -hmm. goes up, one goes into the blade very quietly. You, mm -hmm. the, and I've gone back and since played through that again and like that you guys don't hang on it. It's there if you want to replay it and look for those clues yep. and see those things. And then for me personally, just to jump to the end here of what you guys did by bringing in Tyr, making him Odin, you want to talk about a mind fuck of a moment in post-game content I go and it's me. It's we're working. It's me. It's Mamir uh, and Freya, and we're working our way to the bottom of Odin's prison. And and she makes some comment of just like, "There's got to be something important down here." I'm like, "Yeah, a piece of armor, whatever." Blah. And I just casually open a door, and Tears standing there, 
Tyr is standing there fucking alive. The, I, like the look on Kratos' face was mind playing. And I'm like, <laughs> is this real? Is this a fucking, is this fake? Is this real? And then like to talk to him and then to run into him now around the world. Oh, you yeah. see him around the wake world? up out of a bed. Yeah. 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 And yeah. the fact that you guys put that in post-game content, that, that's just stuff in the end that I think is we so We put amazing. so much into the post-game content. I've noticed. Like we were just like, the more you put into the game, the more it will give you back. Yeah. You know? and, it's, and if you don't want to, you just want to mainline the story. I pretty solid like i think it works for a lot of people very, very but if solid. you go do the other stuff it just becomes more and more rich and you start to see these little pieces and to your point it hints at things it could be but i can't talk about those <laughs> <laughs> i dropped my power cord but everything's okay, okay. <laughs> uh, i want to i want to talk a bit about the the first hour because okay. that was i think for many people like the moment of okay we're gonna be good here right i think both the the grieving of Fenrir, but then you even more her. so the you, know what uh, I mean? <laughs> you son of a bitch. Me and my wife sitting there just months after losing our dog. Like, oh hey my man, God, that's a that's a real this. painful memory. Yeah, and I lost one of ours, and I sit there and I held her paw, man, and is it breaks you inside. One hundred percent. Yeah, that combined with also <laughs> encountering Odin and Thor, and what that was in terms of okay, these are characters here, and then getting to the fight, and it almost being the. The, the mirror of the Balder fight from God of War 2018. How difficult was that to figure out what this first hour is going to be? Because I think for many people in 2018, the first hour is what cements that game, right? It sets the tone. Mm -hmm. Was it difficult to figure out how you're going to set the tone in this one? It, that's a really good question because I can hit on a lot of things that are interesting. I know the mic is muted. So I'm not really saying let's anything. Let's take the covers of the game to start. I'm not right. trying I'm to gonna, like I'm interrupt just, him. Get back to your <laughs> but, but sometimes they're, can't help they're but They're literally talk. 180 mirrors of each other. But I know it's muted. Like where they're looking at the boat mm -hmm. this way, if you flip it around, is where they're opposite looking at Ragnarok and the lake is frozen. They're in the same spot on the lake, essentially. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of like the thesis of these games, that they're like 180s of each other in certain ways. And so the opening of 2018 is this kind of slow, like what's going on? Because you, you have no idea. So we have, you have to get acclimated, you know, but you have this mystery, like Who, why is this funeral? We're starting with this, we're cutting down a tree and all these kind of things. And this, we wanted to be like, bang, 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 bang. Like, we were like, holy shit, there's so much going on. Like, I, I can't not be impressed with this. And I want to know more at the same time. But I, it's on multiple fronts. Where that, you were just like, well, who is this? Who's I'm going to cut in here. Um, I What I love about the beginning of this game, and I don't know why a lot of people have this complaint. I, I, di I didn't care for it, right? Because every game, it kind of has this huge section, right? Where you're coming off God of War 2018, all right, in the beginning of this game, there is a whole lot of nothing that happens in the beginning, just like 2018, and then shit hits the fan, right? And the adventure starts. Here's the same thing. Um, it's just it's a lot of story, and then shit hits the fans. And I was reading a lot of reviews, and they were like, the pacing sucks because it's not, it's too fast, and they get slow. But I think that's great. I don't agree with that at all. I think that the pacing was fine. In my review, my story review, I have never mentioned the pacing because it was never an issue for me. And I don't care like what other like you know person tells me. Oh yeah, there was an issue with this. To me, there was no issue with the pacing. I the game came out the gate, bang bang bang, and then the story started just like 2018. Who's this kid? Why are they I think together? It's just being what are overly we going to do? Critical, you know? So it was a lot more tight. Where this is like we're going to like pop you with a lot it's of questions, give you a lot of characters that you've been hearing about instantaneously. So it was done on purpose. There you and go. To your point about the Balder and the Thor fight, this whole game is playing off him coming and knocking on the door. Like Balder knocking on the door is the first god that shows up. Then Thor shows up. Then Odin shows up. Then Freya shows up. Everybody comes to Kratos' house. But the end of this game is Kratos going to Odin's house. And you do not want Kratos coming to your house. Damn! Like, wow! Like, these, these, these aren't like small things. We set this up to have this run. And some people don't even pick up on that, but it, there's a washover effect that does pick up. And it's why it feels so good, because you're like, this is exactly how it should be, because we've seeded you to get you there where you're like mentally prepared to take it all in. The fight itself, if you look at all the pieces broken down inside that Thor fight, the whole way the statue gets destroyed is all foreshadowing things that are going to come. Oh, um, you know, yeah, like Ruben told me the, this. The guy the did. Curtis gets swung backwards and he throws. Uh, I have that video literally being edited spear, right now. The spear almost comes down and he goes clever and he just knocks it out of the way. Well, what is the weapon that kills Thor in the end? There you go. The spear. Right? The spear. And it's all that kind of like fate. You're never going to. If you can't change, you can't escape it. You know what I mean? So if you stay on these roads, and there's all kinds of stuff like the way the shield gets broken and Kratos' shield gets broken. 
Like all that stuff in that fight. There's just cool. huge little metaphors if you go back and look at the whole Yeah, I have the oh, video yeah. literally in the works. Eric, yeah, stop like ruining my video. Like, oh, like, oh, no, that, that's, I fucking love that. That's those little <laughs> touches we want to fill away. Ah, damn, <laughs> like, I just put for. that yeah. in the video because yeah. Ruben to told the, me. To, Oh, or man. not in Kratos into the loading screen, being like, I'm going to kill you, and I'm, I'm not done. Yeah, so, that Kojima comeback. moment. <laughs> so I almost cut that a couple months. Oh, my God. Uh, my God, you didn't. Before, because we, we, we couldn't get the screen to look correct and then get the subtitles, because like the way the engine works, those are two different things that's going to that screen and all this kind of stuff. And then I, I kind of threatened it a little bit, and then somebody went in and just like, banged it all out and I, they were like check this out like in a monday and it, it was like they were like we can't get rid of this so they came just in to save the day this yeah. <laughs> moment right i was just like we're it's finished when i Kojima say we're finished yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah no and this is our homage like we I love, love video games yeah you know what i mean and so where we can fit those things in and it worked in the mythology because there's also a part about this like a lot of people don't know but that mjolnir has, has this ability to bring these goats back to life and we were never going to show that because it's kind of weird and obscure. But we were like, we'll do a nod to it by him bringing Kratos back to life with the hammer. So <laughs> that I even have that you storytelling. Made, you made me look like a real April Fool here. Because, of course, on an episode of P.S. I Love You, not only did I call a Norse uh, professor from the University of Missouri, I emailed her and got a response. And I was like, hey, wait, in Norse mythology, will Mjolnir come back if called? And she's like, no, it won't. And I was like, got it. We got him. We got him on something. And then Thor is bringing Mjolnir back and forth, left and right, catching it left and right. Yeah. I don't like you playing fast and loose. I love the snap, too. I, Do you I, like the snap? Yeah, I love the snap so much. Yeah. The left-handed thing was, like, really important, too, because it's another thing that you may not notice right away, but all the other characters, when they're because they're coming right at you in the screen, they're also right-handed, so Kratos comes from the right, and they come from the right, and you can gauge the combat visually in a certain way, but because he's left-handed, it's just like when you encounter a southpaw and boxer and it yeah. messes your whole world up, and that's why he get, he throws you off and your timing is a little messed up in the beginning just because he's left-handed. You, you mentioning wow, um, that is that is a cool you know, detail. Removing that the sequence. level of were there any moments in the game that, that goes into you this shit? I wish really I had hot, that man. Uh, fought hard for, or other people in the studio were like, "We have to have this. We cannot remove this." Oh, there's so many. I mean, like the. Honestly, the whole game. Because <laughs> there's so many little moments that people were like, do we really need this? And I'm like, yes, we do. Like, I know it's hard to see right now. Because when it's rough, you're like, this isn't really making a difference. You know, a simple one is like um, when Anger Boda hangs upside down at the end of the, the little log climb. Mm. You know, you see her and then she flips down. And it's like, she could have just been standing there and yeah. delivered those lines. And that's like expensive. You can shoot that animation. You got to line it up. You got to do all this stuff. You got to blend it in and out. It's like, it takes time. And when you have like three, four hundred of those things across the whole game, it adds up real quick. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah, I gotta pay that money. You know? <laughs> and we wanted her to come off playful in this moment, you know, and like almost playful to a point where it's disarming to Atreus because he's never encountered anyone like this. Mm-hmm. He's around a bunch yeah, of he adults. Falls in love with her, really and it almost like, gives him like license they're all to be shitty. a kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on top of that, right? Yeah. So it was like those little moments with her, and just I mean, there's a really good one with Thrude where she's trying to spread the doors apart because she's strong and then he shoots the arrow through but he doesn't give her the heads up and then the door spread and she falls on her ass you know what I mean yeah. and it's just like again because they're in over their head the kids are not there yet they're out there trying but they're you know they're all like young indie <laughs> you know and it's like you're, young indie. you're you're gonna be that guy one day but you're not right now yeah, yeah. but we can see the glimpses of it yeah sure I mean like when he tra- when Atreus tries to crack open his first uh, yeah. chest right yeah, right. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so ah! now I have a question here that I think ties into what we're going on here Mike wrote into kindoffunny.com slash PSILY and says was wielding Mjolnir ever considered as part of the game and if so can we blame uh, Endgame for getting video. there and stealing your thunder <laughs> no you can 100% blame me for not being able to wield Mjolnir um, there's many reasons one, it just doesn't make sense. I mean, the axe was literally created to go opposite it. Yeah, so like, yeah, yeah. Why yeah. would you then take on? It'd be like taking Darth Vader's lightsaber. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like a little weird. I know a lot of people aren't going to buy that, so I'll go with the more like uh, dev sided part of me. I was like, and I told the combat team this. I was like, it's too easy. It's expected. Yeah. They're going to know how it's going to yeah. play. It's not going to feel fresh and new again. We're going to give him the OG weapon. We're bringing him full back. Um, and they were like, what's that? And I was like, we're going to do the spear. And they're like, a stick? And I was like, yes. <laughs> a you stick. guys are going to make the best stick anyone's ever seen. I believe in you. I, I know fucking you can love do that. It. So and cool. they did, right? I mean, yeah. it's like, it I is, put that spear up against any spear you've ever played in a video game ever. Um, and it just, from the, just. I, I, I'm going to cut in. I hate spears in video games. I hate them in movies because they're not, they're not cool. To me, they're not interesting. I love the, I love the, I love swords. I love axes. I love, you know, that close up feel. 
Um, but when I got the spear, I was like, okay, cool, we're getting a spear. I was very emotional because of the Brock moment. But the second I started using that fucking spear, man, the second I saw those animations, and you get this one rune attack where Kratos is like spinning the spear on top of his head. The enemies comes in, and he just smacks them all. Like this, the animations on the spear is what got me. It looks fucking cool be able to explode spears that you throw is fucking cool everything about the spear is cool and it got to the point where i would only use the blades and the axe when necessary i would not use the blades and axe anymore the it was, mechanics alone the spear awesome, is my favorite but the storytelling behind it you know? and that to me is my favorite the storytelling the meaning the purpose the weapons is of great, the God of War man. franchise are so iconic so intertwined oh my with god what dude makes the game special and it's like of course look back to 2018 it's even, so fun where it's like we're introduced to the leviathan axe which is something we wouldn't expect kratos to have but immediately fall in love with it and then as you play through the games getting the blaze of chaos back mm -hmm. in this one there was that question of are we gonna get mjolnir i'm with you where it's like it doesn't quite feel right it's too similar to the axe like what could they do and i just love that not only was the spear cool as hell to use not used the way i would think it would be used in terms of being a weapon but also just the story bits to make this thing that we are being newly introduced to feel as iconic and special yeah. as the other weapons, I think yeah. is like the ultimate testament. I mean, to quality if we take it. those three core weapons, right? So the blades were gifted they all mean to him something, yeah. out of a river of fire and lava, right? The axe was gifted to him by his wife. He doesn't have a weapon that is him. Now he does. Mm -hmm. This spear has his blood in it. Mm -hmm. It's his weapon. It's the mm -hmm. thing that defines him as the person he is. You know, he's the general first and foremost. Sure. And we brought yes. that back out. And I think it really resonates with people. I, mean, I, I think I think building it up and framing it in the way where you see Tindra going down that chute and you're like, what the hell is going on? Why are there, what's all this clutter on the ground? Yeah, yeah, you really yeah, have yeah, no yeah. idea what's what you're in store for until you kind of... And Barrett's right on it with all the B-roll. Dude, it's an awesome Barrett. scene. I love this um, I, I think it's such a cool concept, and I, I'm sure this comes from some sort of mythology that I'm just not aware of, but I just love the idea that it's this thing that replicates, and it's just really cool. <laughs> yeah, and I love the fact of... to. The fact that it feels so good and it feels so normal and it would be, but like just that one line from him, right, where Brock's like, "You're pretty good with that thing," and he's like, "Every Spartan trains that so this is their mm -hmm. first," and I was like, "Oh my god!" Like it was yeah. like such a like this is yeah. awesome. To me, it's, it's, you can feel that he's enjoying it. Yeah, to me, it just calls all the way back. Like you, you look at Ghost of Sparta when you see him with Demos as a kid, and that's what they're there's a little two D fighting game moment where they have the spears and the shields uh, yeah, and they're yeah, battling yeah, each yeah, other, and moment. it's like that's where it all started. That was the genesis of it, and then. You know, we give him we that weapon back in that game, the Arms of Sparta. So I was like, we want to see it in the Norse realm. What would he look like with that in the Norse realm? And one of my favorite parts is the whole idea about this, the ring itself is the collapse. It's elegant for game design, too, because we don't have to throw another big, long point yeah, stick yeah. on him. But we also wanted to work that into where it meant something. So in the Heimdall fight, you know, the it goes like one, two, three, and then you finally clip him with the with the there right hand. There you go, chat. That's why we need to get to use the Mjolnir. That's leaves that cut. There's no you know, reason for even, us to use it. When he finally lands a punch, it's with drop near that he lands that and cuts his cheek. And it's just those little attentions to detail the team look at, and it just makes it everything. This scene helps cement uh, Brock for me as well, right? Like yeah. him blessing the spear was a thing that I did not, yeah, I did not expect to actually get to me, right? Especially Brock being uh, not visible to the mermaid that comes through, and then Kratos turning to him and being like, "No, like I forget the exact line, but something along the lines of like, no, I like I need a, a real blacksmith to like bless this thing for me.'" Let's Amazing. go! I was like, "Oh my god, <laughs> this is fire right here." Yep. Uh, I want to talk about the the mythology side of things because when you look at the the obvious the Norse mythology of it all, right? But then there's also now this more mainstream modern take on this, which is the MCU. Mm -hmm. And the first Here game we, we kind of got hints Let of it. We, we heard about character names we knew of, but this game we're dealing with Odin, Thor, Loki, Heimdall, Mjolnir, like <laughs> all these things that we all have preconceived notions of. Did that affect anything? I mean, it, I mean, we look at stuff. We're not blind. But we've always looked at it from the point of view. There's the Rosetta like type descriptions, you know, and then there's MCU, and then we're going to be somewhere in between there with our own. What we've always said is the God of War paint. Like our Greek mythology is not accurate to Greek mythology. It's set up for what we need to do and how we're going to tell stories. Yes, sir. So we're going to manipulate know. it. There's certain things we like. You know, you'll read like, oh, Thor's got red hair. Cool. That's we like that. Let's make him, you know, red hair and big red beard. Um, but then also. It's more about the storytelling behind the characters that matters most. Like we just, we knew Thor was unmatched. So if you take someone that has that ability, that power, they don't need to grow in any way, shape, or form, like emotionally, you know, or 
like mentally. They can just be a child because who's going to stop him? So he's just this giant man child. He just does what he wants whenever he wants. And the only person he even cares about is Odin and he won't give him any attention because he's too busy doing all the other stuff. So he's just perpetually stuck on us in this like weird, like drunken Peter Pan state, <laughs> you know? And that was interesting to us because we're like, that's fun to explore because it has a lot of stuff that's grounded, which the new God of War has a lot of grounding, but it also gives you this vehicle into the mythology. You know, by understanding these, these, these softer human insides of them, you're like, okay, and then you start to buy in and we get you in that suspension to disbelief and then bang, you're like, whatever they say, I'm in with. You know, and, and, you, and you, you ride along without questioning it too much. And that's I, when, you know, movies and books on, and stuff on, like that are great, when you stop thinking. Cause it's I, I just want to cut in here. Um, this moment I loved. This is all I've wanted, this Kratos and Thor moment. It's what I've wanted. I've made like three videos talking about it. That they have to make them relate in some way. And to hear Thor and Kratos, they didn't like, you know, go real detailed, but they were like, oh, you're a destroyer like me. The things that we've done, the, you know, them relating to one another is great. Easy to think, right? It's like what's one of my favorite quotes, or quotes is like, you know, um, comparison is the thief of joy. And the moment you start comparing it, you're not paying attention anymore. And you're just like taking all the fun out of it for yourself. It's like just get in the pocket and ride along and see what happens. Yes, well, I think you sir. do such a good job by establishing these characters that way. You know what I mean? Both in terms of, yeah, a Thor, in terms of uh, any of the people we put in there, but especially in terms of Kratos, right? And the fact that, like, I was prepared to start up and, yeah, eventually wield Mjolnir, uh, get in there and have it be that Kratos and Atreus were father and son, but they hadn't grown much while ha they hadn't been on camera and stuff. So to start up this game and be so pleasantly surprised to find them being that buddy team that mm -hmm. they, are, they have grown, they have changed. Again, Kratos, you know, I think having grown so much to get to the point of where he's at in this game. And again, like every time where I'm like, oh, I see what they're doing. They're going to tease that there's going to be this rift. And of course he's going to be mad. And even when Kratos finds out about that and like, is angry, he's not angry, right? He's not mad. He's not Kratos. He's going to yell, and he's be, you know disappointed. <laughs> exactly. But even then, it's he's not even disappointed in like, the way you let me down. He's disappointed in the way like, Why you kept you tell it me, from bro? You yeah, can talk exactly, to me, Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and like, even to see the growth of Kratos and Mimir, right? When like Kratos mm -hmm. walks Calls in and like, brother, Mimir is actually like... counseling him and he's actually listening and they call each other brother and they're doing this stuff and it's just like, And he's oh, like a legitimate uncle. God. Yeah, yeah 100%. That was, really, me, yeah, see, that was like super important to us to like show it not tell we could go on and talk all day long right but it's it's just like anything like you guys work with a lot of people and there's like people that talk there's people that do stuff I'll, and I'll, you know who you have respect for right so we wanted to show that that's right Corey Barlog yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> talk about showing you in trouble <laughs> I want to bring in I want to bring in uh, Tavin Bothell who wrote into kindoffunny.com slash P-S-I-L-Y and jump off that too my question is that Kratos is a man of few words and shows little of his emotions how difficult was it to balance along with Christopher Judge how much to let come through how many times did the team need to strip back words or pull emotion back or find a more subtle way to convey them? And what I'd want to tack on is talking about, and I'm, I, I'm probably getting too into the weeds and I don't make games, as Andy always points out, but like what the technical power of where we're at in 2022 allowed you to do. Because for okay. me, like being in the tent with Kratos and Atreus the night before the siege, right? Like the emotion on this man's face it's, and i say it's, man it's right incredible. like i mean like yes. it's the most real i've ever seen in a video game like i and i you know this is a, when i we just did our not just but recently did our god of war 2018 re-review and the number one question to ps i love you was, was man i can't wait to see what greg thinks now that he's a father and playing through that first game i'm like i will never be this disconnected from my son so i really didn't feel much for it this is the scene that broke me in the front you broke me making me think of my dog that passed away this year mm -hmm. in this one you made me think of how much i love ben and how much clearly kratos loves atreus let alone how much atreus loves kratos because there is that moment right of like they walk up Talk and here are two tents and, Atreus like, I shit, own tent. and it's not and i was like he doesn't sound excited about it, right? And he's like, yeah, warrior shit. He's like, yeah. And then when he comes back in here, it's just like, oh my God, you know what I mean? Yeah. Of just like the growth and the character and like right there of him chewing his cheek. Like, you know what I mean? Like as somebody who, has, who on camera all the time tries to hold back crying, like I know exactly every, yeah. every pained emotion in this man's face. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot to unpack there. Um, yeah, sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> I mean, first off, that scene was, you know, our narrative director, Matt Sofo, is wearing his heart on his sleeve. He's, he's got a young Matt girl. Matt is home amazing. And, you know, Rich Gobert the same way. Those two come together for that scene, and it was just, he was like, this has to happen. 
Because I was like, are you sure you want, I mean, he comes in, it's going to make him feel a little soft on the way to Ragnarok, potentially, you know, some people are going to call that. He goes, no, we're going to set it up. We're going to make it right, where it's the only way it should happen. You yes. couldn't think of it happening any other way. And, you know, you trust good people. Matt's good people, Rich is good people, and they got in there and they took care of that scene. When you get to set, Chris, then that's a different thing. Because he really puts it all in. And there are days where he's like, I got two in me. There's other days where he'll do it 15, 16, 17 times. You know what I mean? But, like, this is one of those ones where you're like, you're only going to get so many because he's going to put everything into it. And to your point, you know, he'll, he'll be right on that line and we'll call cut and then it'll drop. And the tears will roll and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And it's wild. He can just hold it. Just waiting for you to say it. And it's just shows how professional he is. You know? But actually how much he cares about this character. Like, Chris really, really cares about Kratos as a character. Because you know? it's... It's easy to come to work, but I don't think Chris ever came to work. He came to like embody that character. Sure. And so, you know, it was just a pleasure working with him on all. Holy shit! I, I think Christopher Judge, like, I think he did so, a so much more better job um, in this game than 2018, right? 2018, you know, you, he, he was doing his thing. He was really, really doing well um, as an actor. But this game, it truly shined, right? Even with Kratos' long-ass beard, you can truly see the emotions on his face. And Christopher Judge killed it. I don't care what nobody says. Chris fucking killed it. Absolutely. Uh, I want to talk about Atreus. Because hmm? I'm a documented Atreus hater <laughs> from God of War 2018. Oh, you're a Atreus? I'm, I'm a hater. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, right? Like, replaying God of War 2018, I hit a, I hit a point where I was like, Oh man, this kid is such a kid. Uh, he's annoying, especially when he gets into God mode of like, I can do anything and oh, starts the, killing the people. Oh, the son is a jerk mode. All yeah, the whatever. <laughs> the, amount, the amount of time he says what. Also, shout out. That's Have you ever been like, around an eight year old, by the way? <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah, but like, he's really an eight year old. Uh, but like, shout out to the moment in this game where he was like, uh, I think he's having the so vision, good. right? And, yeah, he has like all the younger versions of himself oh, when he sees running all back and forth. He sees all the whatever. And they keep saying whatever, and I'm like. Yeah, I did it. You like, did you did it. it. You brought me back. <laughs> you referenced um, the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I, I loved Atreus in this game, right? I That's think awesome. teenage, teenage Atreus worked so much He's better cool. on me. And I wanted He's to ask cool. you, like, how in the world did you capture a teenage, teenage Atreus, right? Like, how difficult was it, especially with him having a different voice, him having having a more developed personality, him having the moments where he's like, ah, shit, 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 and then, like, Brock and, <laughs> or either Brock and Cinder, I forget which one, but uh, him and uh, Kratos being like, Bro, watch your mouth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How was um, I mean, the cool thing is that Sonny's like almost exactly the age. You know, he's come up as the character. So on this this game, I think he was, you know, 14 to 16 when we did the primary shooting. <laughs> His voice kept changing, which is a whole different problem. Yeah. Uh, but we took care of that. <laughs> Peter Brady problem. Yeah. <laughs> but um, And then Sonny grew a lot as an actor. You know, he'd done some things in between the games. And... Um, he was pushed by the people he was working with as well, you know, to, to be like before it was like he could just be that wondery kid and just kind of like question things and, and kind of skate on this. This time he had to like carry scenes. There's no yeah. Kratos there. Um, so one of the fun things that we saw early on was when, when we cast Leia to play Anger Boda, uh, we did the little chemistry read and uh, we said, hey, what do you think of her? And I was, it was already done in my head that we were casting her. She was the best. She has an incredible smile. And I knew she was. She did a great work. job too. Goes, I, I wish we see more of her. Good. To be honest, um, I think she pushed great. me a little bit, and we were like, "Check mark." <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And then the first day on set with the two of them, it was awesome. Uh, she came and she had all her scripts memorized, oh, and just wow. and he was still looking at some stuff and checking. <laughs> and it was just like that was the last time that happened. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he was, and they they pushed each other. And they, when you play Ironwood, I mean, you know, love it or hate it, because I know it's a divisive level, but I'm sorry, they <laughs> come through like as kids. Like, 100%. You're like you're like. I've had that conversation or I know what that feels like or how to like somebody's having a bad day. I, I gotta say like um, I loved Anger Boda as a character. I think she was perfect. She was very like happy. Um, like like uh, like Eric said earlier like very playful um, and I love the fact that she her personality right she's like that's weird but weird can be good. You know I, I, I love I love her personality. She seemed very energetic. Um, she did have a struggle with her grandmother. I love that arc as well. As a kid and you're trying to like F that, let's just go to the park or let's go do this or go to the mall and play video games or whatever. And you just pull them out of it. And I think it's, sometimes there's a little bit of criticism on that stuff where it's like, well, th they wouldn't do that or they would be like this. It's like, dude, you remember when somebody would be 14? There's like a million things going rattling around in your head. And I think they really come through as kids. And it's a testament to one, them being that age, 
And then two, I think the writers and everybody, we really got into like telling stories. Like, hey, I did this when I was this age. And, and, and be, being okay to be embarrassed of them. Like telling embarrassing stories about like this, you know, because if, you, if you're not embarrassed of the person you were five years ago, you haven't grown. So you should constantly do that throughout oh, your entire life. So, so trying to go all the way back, you know, like for us, some of us are like 30 years ago now. <laughs> um, but that's what we wanted because it gives everybody a different way in. You know, you can remember being a kid or you can remember back to being a kid or if you're a parent now like yourself, it's, you come from a different angle and the story just opens up in so many different ways. Yeah, you do such a great job of driving that relationship, having them be kids, seeing them grow to what I think is a believable point, right? At mm -hmm. the end when Atreus like, I have to go off, I have to do this on my own or whatever. And he steps out to talk to her. And again, we're the parents sending our kid off to college, right? And you look at them having that conversation, you know they got it and they're going to be okay. Yeah, like, like that little sequence at the end where they're having the moment and Kratos is watching. Um, we didn't write any dialogue at all. I just went to him and I was like, look, you know, you're going to NYU, you're going to USC, one of you is getting on the airplane, I don't care who, but have that goodbye. That you're hyped for each other, that you're both going to go and succeed, you know, and you're going to crush it together. And they just went over and they ad-libbed the whole thing. And we ducked that audio because it didn't matter what they were saying. No. It was the emotion that needed to come through that scene. And they both brought it. And then he get, or she gives him the marble, you know. So that, yeah, it's... It's just a good little moment. It's a and you get to see him like a man, you know, like for the first time, this young man is going to go out and try to conquer the world and she's going to go do her thing too. And that she was Drop able to... Drop out of college. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she was able to step, <laughs> yeah, yeah, step past Maybe. that whole prophecy that she was involved in as well so she could have her own agency. And that's what we really wanted for all the characters in the post game as well. You run into them and it's like, their lives are still moving forward. 100%. They have things to do. Like this isn't just like hard stop game over. Yeah. Which, I, which I love, I'm sorry, which I love because, you know, the way like... We just watched that scene. And real quick, while I'm here, just to get it off the table, Dave Norridge wrote in to kindoffunny.com slash PSILY and says, at the end of the game, after Atreus speaks to Angry Boda, he appears to look up and nod at someone off screen before turning and nodding at Kratos, then disappearing. Am I right in thinking this? I know you wouldn't say who it would be, but he's not, right? I always read it as that he's like looking no, up like, this is the next step of my life. This is what I got to do, right? Looking towards the future. The yeah. So anyways, I was right. Dave was wrong. Got it. But when, to your point of the living, breathing world and the fact of that, and like so many, I love open world games. I love, mm -hmm. I love action adventure open world games. I love finishing it and then going doing side quests. And Didn't play Elden Ring now, but okay. Wasn't Keep that going. great of a game? Keep I mean, come on, there's only one game of the year this year. Whoa, whoa, right? whoa, whoa. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not getting involved in any of that. That's for the people to decide. But when you play a game on a an action adventure game with a good story and really engaging gameplay and you want to keep playing it, right? Unlike some other ones. Uh, you know, sometimes the side quest that you've left can feel like busy work. Mm -hmm. And the way you guys frame this story where, of course, Kratos comes around the backside, opens the shrine, looks, 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 and then my interpretation sees that he's going to be revered by people that he's on. I assume, I assume that he's on a righteous path, that he, under, this mm -hmm. moment where, again, this man who held off on crying in the tent, knowing he's saying goodbye here, kind of breaks down at this moment, right? Yeah. To, in my interpretation, and tell me if I'm way off, of looking at this and being like, oh my God, I can be redeemed. I've I'm on the path so to redemption. I'm, going, I'm a good person. I can be these people's, not necessarily God, but hero, champion, general. Mm -hmm. uh, then going off and doing all these things and running into people and having all these side quests to me, I felt so empowered walking out of this because it was like, let's get to work, guys. It's us and we have to clean up our mess, which I know they actually have a conversation about they actually want to go off and do. Yeah, I, someone asked a question earlier about condensing down lines and things like that. I believe it was you, mm -hmm. Andy. Um, and this was one of those moments like where we... We first had it, and uh, he was saying a lot of stuff before he came out to them. And I was like, "Man, this is not, this is not Kratos. Like he's, Chris needs to wear it on his face, but we need to trim it down." And I finally got to a place where I was like, "You know, when Mimir asked what he saw, and I was like, just leave it at that and have him say a path. A path. Because the text in the game the whole time is the path that they're walking. Yeah. And I was like, this is a new path that he's gonna walk. And it was like oh, one so of those beautiful. peanut butter chocolate moments where you're like, Happy that's, that's that is it. So beautiful. It's that. And then you know when Chris heard that and he dropped it, and then you're, when he drops it with that voice, you believe 100% that that's what they're about to go to. 100%. So this, yeah, it was, it's just like magic. That that is that is so beautiful. You know, the, the game the whole time the text is up the path, and Mamir is like, that is. That is so beautiful. Like sometimes, like these things, kind of like collide. You know, after spending so much time together, I love, you, I love this game. It almost like figures itself out if you're listening. I want to uh, go back a second, right? Sure. Talk a little bit more about Atreus because I think one of the big turns in this game is the uh, when Atreus is sneaking out, and then all of a sudden it's like 
not control this character right? they've not controlled in a, in, a, in a god of war game before that was one that that surprised me uh mm -hmm. not necessarily because i didn't think you were gonna play as atreus because i think that was a lot of our guesses but we thought it was gonna be like oh kratos is fucking dead now we're playing as atreus <laughs> but it sur surprised me more so the fact that i fucking loved playing as atreus and i was I'm, i was surprised when you mentioned that like Ironwood is divisive because Ironwood for me was probably one of my favorite parts of the game just in mm -hmm. terms of how beautiful I think that area is and then also the dynamic of Atreus and Angerboda that was one where I was like man I could play I, I can play a game with just this which you know I'm gonna stop looking at you look at these guys and be like that's probably a game that's coming up I bet that's probably another <laughs> sequel looking back at you though right like what was, <laughs> what was the no, like, these people right, are so entertaining what sometimes, the balance right? was gonna be between playing as Kratos and playing as Atreus and going Actually, this game is Kratos' game. We're going to keep it mostly to Kratos, but sure. then switch over to Atreus at key moments. Super boring answer. I did raw math. 75%, 25%. I'm not even joking. I love that. That's how I first started off, and then I looked at how we would cut it up into pieces. Well, we wanted that first, the Midgard section, you know, when, when you were talking about, Bus, like where you come out. First off, I'm curious, like, how long you guys sat there before you pushed the stick? Because that oh, was some... Second. Did you, did you hang on for a minute? Yeah, or did you probably like right two seconds yeah. before. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, they're doing it. Um, I think I put we this... saw sometimes in playtest people were like, okay, this cinematic, when's it going to end? <laughs> you know? Uh, I'm not, I don't remember if I put this part. I think I put this part out on my playthrough. Um, but even me, like the moment Trace became playable, I was like sitting there waiting for it to end as well. I was definitely one of those people. Then I'm like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. And I pushed the stick forward and I started going nuts, man. Trace is playable. This is what I wanted for so fucking long. Sorry. For so long, like... I I was I'm so happy in this moment. This moment took me. And then they push a stick, and you would just see their face light up like, "Holy wow. shit, this is happening!" You know what I mean? So that's mm -hmm. fun that everybody has a different experience. But uh, once you go out to Midgard, there we wanted that to be kind of short, concise. And at one point, we weren't going to show you the skill tree or anything. You were going to go to the menu, and it was just him. There's no arm. There's nothing. It was like, oh, okay, this is going to be this one little time. I get yeah. to do this, and it was going to be super no. fake out. And then we found out that it was like, no, it's like like holding too much back. So we were like, let's open this up a little bit more and let them know this is not going to be a one-time thing. And then Ironwood then was like the big bet. Like, and I pushed it the whole time because we had the levels like cut up into like tiers and Ironwood was at S tier. <laughs> and then it was like Svartalheim, Vanaheim, Midgard, and then like the creation realms. And then Asgard was in there somewhere in the, in the middle of all that. And um, the team was like, really? We're going to bet it all on this thing? And I'm like, if, if we can't make him like him here, no one's going to like him. And so that was a, like a really, really big bet. And um, I think it comes through because of the dynamic. The kid's dynamic is just so strong in there. And He's even the stuff with Yala and the animals and the race back home and Gryla, the grandmother, you know, it's like, I remember having that moment where you're like with someone and something happens bad in their family and you just don't know how to console them at all. Yeah. But you're there and it's like, you don't need to talk. Let's just go do something. You know, let's go throw rocks, skip rocks, do whatever. You know, it was also putting all those little childlike moments in there as well was like very, very important. But um, yeah, it was like it was just raw math. <laughs> did you? That's awesome. <laughs> because of it being raw math, did you have any um, idea of like maybe we don't give him the skill tree since you're not going to be using him a whole lot? Are there any things you nope. we should hold back? Here? That was 100. percent I was like, no, if we're going to do it, we're going to do it right because anything you take My away man, from him right, yep. wouldn't be there. The only thing we didn't do is give him the full armor system and the stats because there, yep it didn't translate to the companion and it caused more questions like, well, well how do I deal with him now as a companion? What does his stats mm, mean and all these sure, kind of sure, things? Sure, sure. So we did leave that out. And then it would, when Freya companion then comes in, that would even cause even more chaos. And then might also make you think, well, well she's playable, yeah, you know? Yeah. So we kind of left that neutral. And then obviously there's a time component, you know, sure. and just getting him to be good. Um, Cause we really wanted him to be solid as a playable character like when you're on buttons with him you should feel just as good if not better than kratos and we see some uh chat really really quickly um did you guys enjoy uh atreus right, did you guys like atreus playable let me know in the chat right now i would love to see your responses as i'm watching this sometimes they're like dude he's way better than kratos on buttons you know so that's always like a, a win when you hear that and other people like i don't like range characters or i love range characters yeah. so it's there's just a lot of risk to you. As, as somebody who loves ranged characters, I was totally into it. Yeah. It was like so man. refreshing how fast the melee was. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. I'm just so used to, to Kratos' bit, like, doom, 
too, and then just to have him like fast attacking, I was like, oh, this feels great. Yeah, the evade is usually the clincher for yeah. most people. When he does that little sidestep spin, you're like, dude. That's yeah, cool. I, yeah I remember it? texting, some, I think Bless or maybe uh, uh, somebody from GameSpot talking about it and just being like, man, I think I like Atreus more than I like Kratos, mm -hmm. at least in the moment where we were. And that's kind of where I left it. I was like, oh man, I could have used a lot more Atreus in yeah. here. Like, I legitimately was looking forward to moments where I get to play as Atreus. But I think that comes off of playing, uh, coming off fresh of God of War 2018, sure. and then picking up Kratos and being like, all right, this is like picking up from where I left off, whereas that switch to Atreus was so refreshing. To which brings me to the question of, was this difficult to keep from marketing? Because I know mm. the talk around God of War Ragnarok is like, oh man, like, you know, it looks like, like a lot more 2018. Am I going to be playing as the same Kratos? Am I going to control yeah. the same? And, and the like, fact that the preview period ended right, right before, before that, you could yeah. do that. Was that like a thing where you guys were ever like, all right, let's shut them up. <laughs> like, let's show them Atreus. <laughs> So they knew about it. They were never allowed to talk about right. it. Um, we had like this list of, I think it was like seven things we're never going to talk about. It's like playable Atreus, Bray as a companion, mm -hmm. extra companions, Brock dying, Odin tear flip, and there's a couple more that, oh, the crater. Um, and I can't remember, there was two other things that were on that list that at that time was like, these are never mentioned ever. We're never going to talk about this. I don't care how much you think it's Deborah the best idea Wolf, to do. Origin. Right. Deborah and Wolf. Wolf. Yes, yeah, yes, Deborah yes. Faye um, totally was one of those. Yeah, um, but uh, the yeah, the ESRB did mention multiple companions and ESRB man, ESRB. Um, but it was like don't don't even bother asking. And then we all got off on the right foot, and they were like, okay, cool. And then right before we were getting close to launch, they were like, we should probably talk about this Trace thing, like. You know, they were worried that some people were going to feel like it was like the Raiden flip. Yeah. You know, and like, oh, the, the Raiden flip like, no, from Metal Gear Solid. Play test show. That where the people love it, they're into it, and even when they're not, it's not enough of the game to break the whole game. Mm -hmm. So let's just ride it out, and you know, it's it's hard though because they they're worried about different things, and everybody's trying. It wasn't like they were trying to do anything bad. It was just like this. For anybody who doesn't know what he's talking about with the Raiden thing, or people say Raiden because it's spelled exactly the same. Uh, Raiden was Metal Gear Solid Two. Um, how the whole world was deceived and thought that Snake was going to be a playable character in Metal Gear Solid 2. And Kojima received so much hate at the time about that. That's what he's referring to. You know, they're trying to cover all the bases, and you want the best. You only get that one handshake when it comes out. And if you mess that up, that can just torpedo the whole thing. And if you spent four and a half years on it, you don't want to do that. So it's tricky, and you got to you know, stick to your gun sometimes, even when everyone's telling you you're wrong. <laughs> Before we jump tracks, so this is one question, and then Tim will kick it over to you. Robert wrote in to kindoffunny.com slash PSILY and says, is PlayStation encouraging its studios to have more than one playable main character? We were not encouraged at all. I was going to say, yeah, like, I assume... You that was a decision we made early on. This is funny, because we made that decision before T.L.U.T. came out. I've been saying it for years. Naughty Dog out of original ideas and just copying no, Sony Santa like, Monica. Hey, <laughs> good what they do. Don't um, carry water for Neil but, Druckmann. Uh, all right. <laughs> 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 so, like, yes, I'm, that's not that at we'll all. We'll talk shit about Neil and Corey Barlog here. Oh, Thank you very much. You're going you know, to make me the most hated person without a Twitter on the oh, internet. No, they, they, they see it from kind of funny. They're like, oh, uh, right. idiots. We, hate, we hate them anyway. <laughs> no, but like games take so long to make. It's funny because some people ask you, like, oh, did you react to this thing going on in the world? World is like, dude, we've been in development for three years. Do you think you just put that in? No, yeah. it's like not like that at all. And you hit I, the co-op button, or yeah, the I'm, I'm terrible too. Like once I start a project, I won't play anything in the genre at all for the entire time. Like um, I made two exceptions this time because of uh, COVID. I just had a little extra time on my hands, so I did play Ghost and I did play Oh nice. Oh, yeah. uh, Tilu too. But that's pretty much the only games I played while we were making this game that were in the genre. I play other things was, outside was, of it. Was there ever a moment playing Tilu 2 where you were like, fuck, we got to go back to the drawing board. This is too good. I mean, it's a bummer, but that's like anything. Like I went, you know, see like Spider-Man and like, I'm like, oh crap, we had something like that planned. You know, like when mm -hmm. he goes into that weird dream state with Mysterio. And then we have that whole thing where we just watch with the whatevers and all that. And I'm like, are they going to think we took this from that? You know, and you, just, <laughs> you get in your head about it. And I just seen like a the only if the end Atreus would have grabbed the gun. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know that the villain in the last um, Mission Impossible, he was like hanging people with ropes and all that kind of stuff. And mm -hmm. I really wanted Odin to be he tied everything like that was like the, all the spells were done with that. And I saw that and I was like, can't do that anymore. You know, it's like it just gets in your head and it's like nobody's gonna remember this and they're not gonna connect those dots. Like if we can make it our own again, put our pain on it, then it's okay. So you know, but you never want to just like raw take something. But I, you know, the less that comes in, the less it. Unless you have it's to worry gonna, about yeah, it. Yeah, right? you have to yeah. worry about it. Yeah. So, Tim, I know you wanted some. Uh, yeah, I wanted to talk about the, the companions a bit and like how earlier I was even talking about the weapons and how the mythology and story, like, kind of, it makes them so much more important and play better and all that. 
to me, I feel like this game is so well paced because I always wanted to be playing as what I was playing as, but I was also excited for the next thing. And I feel like the pairings of like who's with who throughout the game as it kept changing was so interesting. And specifically Freya for starting mm -hmm. the episode or the, the game off with her chasing you and it being this really exciting thing. Is that thing. her? And I was yeah. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like that was so cool. But then to get her story throughout that by the time we get to the end and we're talking about the side quests being so meaningful and like whether you're playing them as you're going through the story or uh, in end game content, I love that when the game ends, it's like, well, it's Kratos and Freya now, and it like it, it feels earned, and it feels like, yeah, this this is the companion that I want to go out and do these tasks with. But like, what went into the the idea of the pacing of when there was a, a companion with who, and and who gets abilities, who doesn't, that type of thing. Yeah, I mean, that's a tricky one because when I when I made the original list of all the companions that we were gonna do, that was the that was the freak out moment. Mm -hmm. They were like, oh, this is this is the new. This is what we're going to have to sink our teeth into because, you know, we had one last time and it took the entire project to get one to function and be good. And even though you've learned stuff, um, our companions, even though they're, they're mostly bipedal, they're not on the same rig. So you can't share anything, you know, mm -hmm. whereas like some, mm -hmm. some, other, yeah, some other games yeah, yeah, yeah. where you have like, you know, they're all like six foot two, 200 you know, the 240 pounds. Like, like that's plus. You can, you, yeah, you, guys, <laughs> you can share the animals a lot more so that they're not as expensive just from the animation point of view. For ours, you know, Thor's all unique, Freya's all unique, Atreus all unique, Angerboda. Um, there's a couple here and there that might be retargeted, but mostly it's, they're just from scratch. So that's a crap ton of work just to get them to move and run around the world before they even start fighting. Then you get them fighting, they have to interact with the monsters and so on and so forth. But we knew that we have this kind of saying at this, this studio that our characters are a currency. Like, we believe in our characters so much that we can buy wins with them to the fans. And it sounds like for you're saying it totally landed oh, for you, right? Yeah, was, you're, and, and then because of sequel, variety is always the key to a sequel. Because you can't surprise anymore. There's nothing new that's really going to blow you out of the water. So the variety and the different, and it just comes at you, and you're just like, oh. you guys kind of keep saying the word that we use a lot, which is you're long for the ride. Like, this game was a ride. That was the bet. Where the last game is this more like, no, I'm, you're almost taking a funeral procession. Mm. This is like, nope, we're going to hook it, and then sure. you got to go for the ride. I, I said something uh, to this extent when we did our review, but the amount that this game reminds me of Disneyland and everything Disneyland has to offer, because it is a ride the entire time, but I feel like the ride starts off as more of like a, a pirate's type. You're just here, you're on the river, like looking around at what's going on type thing. Mm -hmm. But then there's also like the... Tower of Terror type like thrill rides that are just kind of interjected like even in ways of the Anger Boda section of once you go through that the race with the wolves all of it but for it to end in that boss fight with the the grandma it's like thrilling and it's like you don't really expect that type of thrill after what kind of feels like a guided listen to a story section but mm -hmm. like I loved how it really kind of felt like walking from land to land in Disneyland getting the different experiences and when you see the whole game as a like as a whole you're like whoa that wasn't just any one type of ride it was many rides mm -hmm. yeah i mean we're we're super influenced by that i mean everyone's gone and like we take pieces away from that the lds are very practiced in understanding that type of pacing and but again like we we mathed it out i mean we have a spreadsheet that has like detailed like line item to line item like what this event's going to be how long we think the prediction of time is going to be like that it was really close at the end of the day it was wild like the it's verse chorus verse chorus like how do we <laughs> yeah no it's, it's <laughs> totally those type of things and i know it sounds kind of mechanical but it's not that my kind of design philosophy i've kind of boiled down to like a sentence is like start with science and finish with feel so we'll go do a lot of math in the beginning figure everything out you know anything mm -hmm. we can do structurally and then when we get it in then we start okay polish this, sandpaper that off. Maybe we'll cut this down a little bit, attack on a little bit more there. Like Svartalheim's a really good instance of that because I had it pegged at about an hour level. And then the guys building it were really good and they kind of made a little bit more than we probably should have, but it was the first <laughs> level we worked on and that happens a lot. But it actually worked out in our favor because it gave more time to build up the, them being together as a unit. And if you pull that extra like 30 to 45 minutes out of there, it might not land as well when they break. Mm -hmm. You get that extra time with them. And so it was like a kind of like blessing in disguise, even though it put a little strain on the production mm -hmm. to, of that level to be a little over budget. So those are kind of things that are hard because you got to go answer for that then. Like, hey, he says this level is going to be an hour. Now it's an hour and 45 minutes. Like, yeah, and it's, yeah, there's a little oopsie there. But yeah, it's a little. And you kind of go, okay, well, we'll do these other <laughs> things. Little, you know, you shift some stuff around and do some more training <laughs> to make sure that everybody's happy. Um, but it's, it's hard. 
it's, it's wild how, how much is in this game, because I feel like we've been talking for a while, and there's still, like, so much that's on the table to talk about. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, there's felt, like, we, two games. Yeah. yeah, and we're going to talk about that. Of course. Right after I tell you about patreon.com slash kindoffunny. Over on patreon.com slash kindoffunny, you can write it to be part of the show. You can't anymore, actually. It's on kindoffunny.com slash P-S-I-L-Y. It's free now. But on patreon.com slash kindoffunny, you can get every episode of the show ad-free. You can get 38 episodes of exclusive bonus content a month. And, of course, you can get shirts, posters, and all sorts of cool exclusive items. Uh, but most important is you can get the show ad-free. And since you're not there, Here's a word from our sponsor. Shout out to Shady Rays for sponsoring We're going to watch their sponsor. We're going to watch their sponsor because cool I'm reacting to You too can so. look this cool without Yo, get their shades, bro. this holiday season. Shady <laughs> Rays is an independent get their shades, sunglasses bruh. company that gives um, you I, I'm, the features of I know I'm not saying shades too much. for a fraction of the price and a fraction of that price during their biggest Black Friday sale. Ever. The best part about Shady guys. Rays is their insane protection program featuring lost and broken replacements. If you lose or break your shades on Get day the one, shades, they chat. tell us that they will send you a brand new pair, no questions asked. Dropped in the lake, off a cliff, Anything. If you get the wrong style for yourself or someone uh, else. Oh, yeah. If it no seems like I'm not saying worry. much, Avoid it's just because, like, with I, free 30 I love so the way Eric is talking turns. about you will this either game, love the shades love or shady rays. We'll We're almost at the two hour mark back. of them. Act talking now about for the shit, best so. Black Friday selection. Uh, Redeem really cool, only man. at shadyrays.com really where stuff, you can man. find all the newest and best. Someone's saying Corey is better. They only at shadyrays.com where you can find all the newest and best shades. I hate comments like that. Did you want to go somewhere, Bless? Is there some burning questions? Because I have Lots of, I have a lot of rapid fire I want to get to. We have you for another 15 minutes, so oh, I want to make sure we're going through. But, Bless, where are you, where are you going? Where I'm you going, going to Odin because I feel like that's Odin. one of the big... Uh, Toby! I'm going to Toby Odin. from the West Wing! <laughs> and for, uh, I don't know, that was the other <laughs> <laughs> um, Of course, you start off the game, right? In that first hour, you hit Thor, and, like, Thor... I'll describe it as like, oh, this is the Thor we expect, right? He comes in, he's like, I'm Thor. He's like, you know, he's talking like Thanos and all this shit, and he's very scary. But then... Great impression, by the way. Thank you. I'm mm-hmm. Thor, I'm Thor. Uh, I'm Thor. But we, then, we tried that, but it didn't quite work. You <laughs> can, can hire Hey, what's up, I'm Thor. <laughs> what, what's good? Hey, yo, what's good? Uh, Odin knocks on the door, right, and comes through, and he, he gives this performance that... I did not expect from Odin. I don't know if anybody was expecting oh, from Odin. Definitely Dude, not, man. This entire scene I didn't expect, right? Because Thor shows up, and I'm like, let's go. And then they start talking, and they're doing the wine, and then he, Odin shows up, and I was like, ah. Oh. And it was like, you get lulled into this false sense of confidence, and then he's like, don't take too long. And he gets up, he's like, finally, or whatever, crap. And then, you know, ah, yeah. so good. <laughs> like, everything's so good. What was, the, what was the idea behind the direction of Odin? We wanted him to be this unassuming old man, and I always kind of talked about him being like a, New York chess hustler, you know, you just sit around <laughs> and just like eat a bagel and then just empty oh, your pockets man. and you don't even know what the fuck happened. You know what I mean? Like, um, but you know, he's more of the, he used words and the, you know, in the mythology, he's always wandering around. And I love that idea. I was like, because of what we were going to do, I was like, we always keep him on the move. And even when people go back, they'll try to be like, but he was always moving. We didn't know where he was. You know what I mean? He's just like, he could be anywhere at any time. And so that helped with that going back and trying to like, Oh no, he you know Are there any he couldn't be there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So that was part of the seeding of it, but the performance really came down to to Schiff. I mean, like we wrote him, and uh, Rich was doing the VO, like he's our, our lead writer, and he would he had kind of an interesting way he was doing, it. and I was like, this is kind of working. And then um, we started looking at casting, and then obviously when when Schiff said yes, we were like, okay, this is going to work. But the, the the real genesis behind that is like there was a couple movies that I I used high inspiration from. Um, the Bronx Tale was the main one. And uh, if you haven't seen that movie, like Robert De Niro's a bus driver in New York and Chaz Palminteri plays this gangster. And then Robert De Niro's kid gets caught in the middle of this, like on the street corner. You know, and he's like running errands for the mob boss and getting paid money. He's making more money than his dad driving the bus. <laughs> his dad doesn't like this and pulls him away from it. And so I wanted, you know, Kratos was De Niro and, you know, Schiff was... Chaz Palminteri, like doing that, and That's it's awesome. like one of the favorite awesome, movies of all, Yeah, that is all awesome. And, uh, Angry Boat is the girl who unlocks the car door from the inside. There's a little bit of that in there. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously, yeah, like, for sure. It's, for sure. Like, I love that you call her Angry Boda. Yeah, Anger Boda, right? Sorry, I don't know. Angry it was hard. Well, I, I, I called the Angry, angry Boda, Boda like years ago, too, man. It's not your fault, Greg. By the way, when, when, when we were introduced to Angry Boda, I'm just like, I, I want the MCU to just put her in everything. Like, oh my I did. I, I, we're all such huge MCU fans. It's like, put she's amazing. Put her in everything from here on out. And I'm telling you, Leia is, she's a little force of nature. Like, yeah. she got on set and you just, she's like magnetic. Every line was pitch perfect. Yeah. I, I loved her performance. Crushed it. Did you guys notice that the little thing she's painting in the beginning is that meeting? 
Yeah, 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 That's yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. He's on his butt with a knife, and she's standing above. She's him. painting oh, yeah. that That's very literally moment. what she's painting right now. That's awesome. <laughs> I didn't notice that. <laughs> Another one of Super like visions. the side quest uh, at the end, right? Of like what opens up at the end, but like you know, going back to the squirrel, getting more seeds, and like. Getting to go to that round. What'd you think of Sung Won as Rata Tasker? He's amazing. It's so, <laughs> right? so good. It's so yeah. unexpected, right? Like, so yeah. unexpected for that world. But, you know, the, the way Freya and Mimir talk about going there and then, you know, Kratos getting to go, well, all of them getting to go talk to Anger, Boda. And, you know there what you I mean? Walk, walk over there and have a conversation, let alone then, I think it's Mimir. Mimir who dimes out that, like, oh, yeah, the boy's, like, obsessed with you or whatever. He's like, ah, shush, 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 everybody shut up about it. Like, it's such a sweet moment, but then the way the characters revere their own world, the way, and what I think is so great is the way the game post-credits works as its own kind of spoiler cast and works as its own, like, hey, did you notice? Because, like, you know, again, I'm having car rides with Barrett and conversations with Bless, but, like, when they... They're like, hey, did you notice the world serpent get knocked back in time? And it's like, oh, man. It's like, oh, man, if you did miss any of that or you didn't have somebody to talk to or you're not watching this show, right? Like, there's these <laughs> conversations that happen in there that, that pick up on those threads that I just think. As fantastic. somebody with such a terrible memory, there are so many moments that I go, oh, I'm going to try to bookmark that up in here. <laughs> yeah. I got to I gotta record this on the PS5. My PS5 hard drive oh, yeah, is full too. of recordings <laughs> to go back and, and watch references. Right, mine of, too. Like, I have like, so many. Yeah. I have like probably oh, my God. It wasn't you. When, when all that shit was happening, I was like, oh, my God. God, am I the one? <laughs> I'm like, I want to pace my five is just to we, we were stressed for, for sure, but uh, it's over. You made it. You made it. The the line in the Anger Boda post thing is the killer one is when he goes, "Oh, my son draws too," and then she says, "The, oh, thing, the like, discipline yeah, thing. Good. He needs more discipline." And and I like Chris her. Just goes. He chuckles. Yeah. And he goes, "I like you." <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. like what better cosign could you get? And yeah, I think that's the only great. time he's ever like laughed. Period. No, he laughed one of the no time franchise. of the game. Yeah. He laughed one Chris of the time of the game. Do this. At first, you know what I mean? He was like, he's, he's, <laughs> "What's it? What's a Kratos laugh sound like?" I've yeah, never yeah. heard that. The, the, uh, you want some rapid a... fire? It's your guys' show. I do, Greg. Thank you. You I know do. what? Be excited. I'm excited. <laughs> you know what I mean? I want it. Lord. <laughs> well, since we're there, let's start with this. This thing's made of God of War. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's your show, man. <laughs> yo, Eric gets Jim, a lot. Yo, it's your show, show walking, man. But it's, it's picking up where we are about lines, right? Okay. Jacob says, hey, gang, I'm about seven hours into Ragnarok and already have some of my favorite funny moments slash line deliveries from the game. Notably, when you get to play as Atreus for the first time and he tries to punch through the loot chest like his father typically does with these in the moment where Atreus tells Tyr, my dad likes loot. Which was amazing, right? When Tyr is like, as I'm oh, Greg damn. playing it for trophies, running off doing whatever, and he's just like, "What are you doing?" He's like, "My dad really likes loot, or whatever." And then, yeah, this moment here. Oh, for, look look, look, at, his, look at his time. wrist! Look at his wrist! <laughs> ah, it fucking bends. Uh, another great gameplay help is uh, we don't have what we need for this puzzle yet. Yeah, love that. Oh, oh yeah, when they, when great impatience. I love so, how it translates. Like, the amount of times that like bends, I, I, I had just restreamed. I was streaming part uh, or 2018 rather, uh, my first playthrough since the game came out. And there were several moments that, you know, I have a terrible memory and I'm going back to puzzles and people are like, Andy, you don't have the thing for that. I was like, oh, thank you, Twitch chat. <laughs> and in here, I had my own Twitch chat in the game with yeah. Trace being like, I don't think we got what we need for that yet, Dad. Great. Let's move on to the next part. I had a real quick thing there, too, with the weapons. I love that early on, I start seeing, or maybe a third through the game, you start seeing, like, the yellow orby looking things around. And I'm like, wow, this weapon's blue and that weapon's red. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting another weapon. Oh. And I don't think Mjolnir's yellow. So I think it's going to be something new. So yeah. I was really excited. That's cool. That's cool you picked up on that. <clears throat> Jacob's question, though, what are your favorite memorable moments and pieces of dialogue from throughout the game? Can you can, can you find any of that? Um, the I mean, the one that we knew was good was when this crew bust up on set was the whole when he was back in Sindri down and Sindri's like do you need a snack and then Chris was like I do not, do not need a snack and we were like they lost it we were like <laughs> okay this I knew you wanted a that's snack. gonna be a meme for sure <laughs> like, that's so, similar to the, I'm the fucking god of war they didn't make the cut <laughs> yeah but the, uh, the thing that was cool about that uh, not to take away from your rapid fireness of all these but oh, uh, no, please. is um, that showed that the comedy could land much like when we did the sure. 2016 reveal, like when Kratos goes, your deer's getting away. And we were like, if no one even chuckles or laughs there, like we're, that part's going to be screwed for the rest of the game. And then they did. So this is another one of those, like you throw the test out there and it's like, okay, if that works, then we, can, we have a whole bunch in the chamber that we want to do, but only if that works. And then when we get some good feedback, it's like, okay, cool. And then they just kind of let the writers go yeah. loose. Similar vein, JJ Maxey says, what's your single favorite emotional scene? Man, there's so many good ones. 
We have, I, for me personally, just, you know, obviously the dog stuff I, destroyed yeah. me, but I love so much the quote of to grieve deeply is to have loved fully. That's a good mm, one. Yeah. It's Faye. Yep, Faye. Yeah. I want to give a shout out to uh, Throod and Thor. Chat, uh, what was your favorite like, emotional Thor, moment? Let me know. The r- reveal of Thor being an alcoholic I was the very father, end with and, like, and you know, Throod kind of talking to Atreus and working with Atreus to like kind of work through that. I thought that was a pretty powerful scene that I was not expecting in this game. Thank you for the three like, donate. Yeah, donation. yeah, the one, the one. It's, I believe that's three this dollars. one's kind I of like, it, yeah, left field, but when there's Angerboda and Atreus are saying goodbye, and he looks over and he goes, "You know, I'm gonna come back, right?" And then she kind of hesitates, and she just goes, sure. It's like, because she's not there yet. She's still in, I'm going to be stuck here doing this. I haven't made the decision to go do my own thing. And it just crushes you, because if you were to leave a good friend behind that couldn't get out of their own way to go and do something, that one always yeah, stuck that, with me. And later crush that, that line. Sucks. That sucks. I remember I said, I was like, oh, come on. <laughs> you got me. Uh, Barrett Courtney on the ones and twos writes in and says, what about writing dialogue for side quests for both Atreus and Freya? Which yeah, how again... difficult was that? <laughs> Sorry, I forgot you could do that. <laughs> that was gone. Uh, yeah, it's like Kent. Uh, um, the, I don't know. I mean, I didn't write it, so uh, <laughs> no, it uh, planning it all is very difficult because of the scripting of it. Because you could leave and come back, yep. and like it's that part is insane. Like the, the amount of stuff that goes into that. So hats off to the narrative tech team level the designers and everybody helped script all those moments together. The writing itself was always centered around, it had to be these family themes or whatever we were trying to, to knock out. So that, I think, they got in the pocket with that really quickly. And I think that's why a lot of them, so many of them land. Like, specifically, the one that always stuck out to me is when you take a trace to release the first half Goofa, and then Kratos, you know, doesn't quite say it, but then Mimir's like, didn't Adana, he just wants to spend time with you. Yep. And it's just yeah. like, if you are a parent, I mean, that just, boom, that just totally. hits you, right? Because they're just off and they don't want anything to do with you. Just like feed me and give me money to go to the mall. Or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, yeah, it's just, it's a good little moment. Yeah, and it's a heartbreaking one for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, John wrote in and said, who blew the horn? Whoa, 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 whoa. Gotta ask the other guy. Whoa, whoa. God damn it. When, when, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. When he said John, he didn't mean me. I, I did not submit any questions to PS I love you. That was another dude. Uh, don't say John. I, I, I have not watched PS I Love You in years, okay? I never asked the Boomer Horn because yeah, I don't care. I'm sick of it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm really? sick of it. I'm sick of it. Hold on. A horn. Got to ask the other guy. God damn it. <laughs> I'm really? sick of it. I'm sick of that guy. Uh-huh. I'm sick of that. <laughs> that wasn't so it me. Been Balder, right? It was Balder. I mean, I know, but I'm. Who never is it? Tell us. Why? Well, it's it's yeah. over, right? You're done. You said two games and you're done. <laughs> gotta ask the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> I got a question, uh, not related to God of War. What are you gonna play now? <laughs> now that you're free. <laughs> so funny story is every time I finish a game, I play Castlevania Symphony of the Night, the greatest oh, yeah, game yeah, ever yeah. made. I was playing it. That's awesome. I was playing it the morning the reviews came out because I didn't want to know and I didn't want to go out and talk to the team because I was being <laughs> kind of in my own head. Corey kept busting in my office. He's like, dude, what are you doing? I was like, dude, can you not tell? <laughs> I'm in the library. <laughs> I'm trying to like, get through this and go get, buy some stuff at the shop. Um, and then he'd come back in and he was like, Kramer, you just kept blasting in my office. And then uh, finally he came in and he's like, I don't care anymore. It's a 94. And I was like, cool. And I paused and went right back there. He's like, dude, I'm going to kill you right now. So <laughs> we had a little fun with that. Um, but yeah, I play that game every time. And the hilarious thing is my timestamp is April 21st, 2018. It was the last time that game was oh, played. Wow. Oh, that's amazing. So it's just, uh, it's always been near and dear to my heart. I played the original Japanese one on PS1. So I'm going to play that. Um, other than that, uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff. I got to catch up. I got a lot to play. I was saving. Send any- suggestions. I guess it's Elden Ring. You play Sekiro? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I guess Elden Ring. <laughs> 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 you heard of Marvel Snap, though. Let's tell you about that. <laughs> yeah, it's semi-list. Elden's I'm all ears. Uh, I had Andy's question at the end along with one of mine, but I'll toss it in here, too. This is back to God of War, and I apologize for not having the character's name jotted down. Is it intentional that the human outside of Skilder. Valhalla that you talk to, that I marvels think. that you climbing the walls, dressed exactly like Link from Breath of the Wild? Great question. I will never say. <laughs> Are you talking about, about Skilder? Yeah. Is that his name? I'm sorry, yeah. Man, I didn't put him in those clothes. That's all I got to say. Huh. <laughs> you must find out who did. <laughs> look at this guy. I was like, he, I ew, shit. I never one. actually no, noticed, like, but Greg is right. He does look like Link from Breath of the Wild. Have you seen his post-game? I haven't gotten to him, no. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, His yeah. post-game's incredible. Oh, okay. He's like, I've I'm going to spoil it for him. He tries to take the coin from the rock that Kratos threw. You know when 
yeah. Kratos goes to leave the house and he chucks that golden penny into the infinity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Mimir goes, keep the, the change. One, the, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the one that Odin gave him? Yeah. It gets lodged into a wall and Skjolder finds it and he's trying to pull it out of the wall because it's going to be his, his start. This is what he's going to build his whole future on. And he's trying to pull this penny out of the... But he can't pull it out of the wall. And you just keep <laughs> oh, coming back. Oh, sure, Link. He, yeah. he, <laughs> you, you keep going back to it. I, I, I can't even remember how many. I think there's like... They wrote like 10 different pieces of dialogue. You keep going back and he's got all this stuff. And he's like, no, I don't need any help. And he's just still trying to pull this penny out of the Whoa, wall. I didn't know about that part. Wait, 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 wait. You can't go back? Hold on. Locked behind hitting character level nine. Because you got to earn stuff. But then... Hold on, 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 hold on. You, there's more dialogue to that. I got the first one when he talks about the coin and him trying to pull it out. I didn't know if you go back, oh, there's something else I have to do. The game's again. over. It's not. You can get level nine way before that. Get good, get, get good at a game, dude. <laughs> first off, play no, none of you three all. fuckers are platinuming, and I'm the one working my ass off in between baby diapers. You can, right? once, you once you know. get access to the uh, Muspelheim, you can take care of level nine. No, that's true too, I guess. Yeah. Uh, a, a question, not for Eric. A uh, question for you guys. <laughs> Going back to the idea of like, I feel like this game sets up so many. <laughs> yeah, <everyone's going laughs> Where Eric's yeah. like, God damn. The, this game, I feel like, sets up like multiple different sequels, right? Like, I always go back and think about Uncharted Lost Legacy and like that type of Sony sequel where sure. it is. Here's a smaller scale game that is focused on on different characters. Do you guys feel like going back to the Mjolnir conversation, us not getting to use Mjolnir, and then us running into Throod at one point, and she takes off with Mjolnir? Awesome. Y'all think we're getting a Throod video game? Like a Lost Legacy style God of War spinoff. I would that adore is that. Food. I don't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't bet the farm on it. Yeah. I would hope so. Yeah. Just an idea that I'll throw out there. I guess yeah, anybody in the school could be listening. These are all just ideas. These are all just ideas. <laughs> ideas. You know when you do that, we can't do it because then you can sue us and it gets all uh, weird. Unless right? you figured it out before. Yeah. Unless you, you can see the idea before I said it. You know what I mean? You know? Sure. Yeah. 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 What, what other ones? Do you, what other games do you want to see now? I want to see. I want to know all these spinoffs. I was thinking like a like Moonlighter, but you're Sindri. Oh, and you run a shop, you awesome. run a, a blacksmithing shop during the day at night, you're all you're going out to adventure and get uh, items and crafting. They're just goofing materials. around now. Thanks. Goofing around. Um, we're almost done. I want to make sure I get a couple in here that this one got me. This one, I feel like such an idiot for not getting. I literally got it Friday night. I got this line of dialogue and thought, that's funny, and didn't, for some reason, I must have been tired, examined it at all. My dog Nick, 96, from Massachusetts, writes in and says, Mimir asked Kratos about a story he heard of him fighting in a tournament with princesses, autonot autonot automatons, and history's greatest musician. I'm assuming this is a nod to PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale. Is it canon that Kratos also fought in Soul Calibur and against Shovel Knight? Say it! I'd love a copy of yes. Shovel Knight DLC. Say Spades it. of Chaos. Two little trowels on chains. There's a free idea for you. That's all awesome, by the way. Is that... Is, I, I don't it, even know what to do with that. I, um, well, for, to start, is it a PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale reference? Because I, I heard it, and it went, and Mimir's like, I'd love to hear that story. No, wait, no, like, no, no, no. Eric could confirm this. Eric actually confirmed <laughs> this on a this website. I put it on Twitter. References to it the, actually uh, is oh, a thing. Oh, yeah, that was a... There's a group of... A group of people. I think it was mostly Anthony Birch. And um, sorry. Uh, yeah. So on place. So another website asked Eric the same exact question, and there Eric confirmed that yes, it was a PlayStation All Star reference, which I made a post saying that PlayStation All Stars is canon. Sorry. Adam Dolan and a couple of people. You're talking about the poems. Assisted right? poems. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those are those great. Were fun. Yeah, those are super idea. fun to work with. The, so the yeah, confirmed too. PlayStation like, All Stars is canon. Like, oh, it's cool. And they'd be, like, send back and be like, hey, a little like this or. You know, like that. So we were really happy to get this. PC guys. All right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you want to correct uh, my doc, Nick 96, <laughs> Kratos was not in Soul Calibur. He's in Mortal Kombat 9. All right. Uh, it was a PlayStation All Stars Kratos reference. Is in Soul like Calibur. Oh, which, yes. which Soul Calibur is he in? I believe he's in the PSP version. Oh, okay. I wouldn't have played that. <laughs> I wouldn't he have played has the first and the whole deal. I take it back. He was better in Mortal it's, Kombat. It's time. So here are like two quick ones, and you're done, right? Okay. Bill is basically asking: Is there any super secret any of your cutscenes that people haven't found? Like. You have your normal, you have the credits, and then we have the other credits after the funeral. There's a one on a flash drive at my house that no one will ever see. Okay. Damn. Good, good, good. I'm gonna Eric, <laughs> Eric, how much just I got to pay you, bro? Other stories, I'll just don't you. go to medieval times with it. Okay. And then <laughs> Professor Boom X Zero writes in and says, I know we got nothing for God of War 2018, but do you think we could get a DLC for Ragnarok? Um, I don't know, man. That game is big. I think we put everything we had into it, so. I wouldn't okay. count on it. Okay. Okay. It's okay to be like Thanos and just go rest in your garden. <laughs> Playing Castlevania Symphony. Yeah. Like <laughs> hey, I, you guys can make an app, and you have the the audience out here, the world. Like, uh, you know, 
I don't know what I'm doing next, but if uh, somebody gets me that Castlevania license, we would love to make. Oh, oh. oh. you heard it here first. Better than that. Let's go. We're going in better than that. All right, ladies and gentlemen. I also just got orders. so much trouble. <laughs> Get to tweeting Konami and Herman Holst and tell them that who Eric needs to do Make it happen. Twitter, right? I don't. Eric needs to do it. Eric, congratulations on God of War Ragnarok. It is truly an achievement, and thank you sp for spending your afternoon with us. Thank you so much. It's been awesome, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Ladies Please. and gentlemen, of course, this has been PSI Love You XOXO. Each and every Friday, usually, we come to you with a brand spanking new episode talking about PlayStation. If you want to support us and get it early. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, man, that was that was fantastic. Yo, Eric fucking killed it again. Eric did such a great job. Everybody did such a great job um, on this fucking game, you know. Uh, I, I loved it. I know some people have issues, but for me, this game was incredible. Um, again, I talked about it in my review. Uh, I, I think the characters in this game were written beautifully. I think everything was written beautifully. Um, I know people have their issues, but this is just my opinion. I think that the game is incredible. Um... I didn't give a number score because I hate giving video games numbers as scores. It doesn't really make much sense to me. But in this game, I think it's like, if I had to, um, I think it'd get a 10 in my in my point of view, right? I played the game, I think I'm like, what, over 50 hours in this game. I, th I think it's incredible. Um, I think Eric did a great job for his first time directing. And I, and I hope that he would fucking come back for something else. Um, I know, you know, with the God of War, they're constantly changing directors. Uh, but Eric, Eric did great. I loved, you know, his personality, the way, everything he talked about. He's funny as fuck sometimes, you know. Um, gosh, man. Thanks to him, I have to go fucking look at Skiolder. <laughs> Apparently there are dialogue pieces that I missed. Um, so I have to go back and check that out. Uh, but yeah, this was an amazing stream. Uh, we've listened to Eric talk for two hours straight. And I loved every second. I love hearing him speak about the games. Um, again, I, th I think that this was truly incredible. Um, he did talk about a lot of things. And I part of me wants to make a... Uh, like a roundup of everything he said, all the important stuff. Um, he didn't really hint that too much in the future, except in the IGN thing he did after rewatch it. Um, but uh, but yeah, what's next for God of War? In, in my personal opinion, there's a video that's currently being edited right now. Um, but I think that it's gonna be you know with Atreus and all these characters that you know he met in this story, like Skjolder, um, Thor's daughter, uh. Uh, Skjolder, the Wars daughter, uh, Anger Boda, uh, the Serpent, uh, Tyr. I think all five of these characters are going to go ahead and do their own thing while Kratos, Freya, Mimir um, build up Asgard where Kratos will eventually become revered by the people, loved by the people um, for his actions. Uh, it, it does suck that we're going to have to wait. <laughs> <laughs> probably another three to five years to play something Santa Monica pushes out but I'm sure something is in the early stages right now with Corey as director um, we do know that they're working on their own a brand new IP so this new IP could be called God of Mischief um, I hope it's you know, part of me hopes that they're doing two things you know this other thing because Santa Monica they definitely have the creative people over there you know have like a brand new IP and this God of War franchise continuing with Loki um, that's what I think. It just ended. We sat here for two hours. I saw you here earlier, Georgi. So yeah, the next thing I think is uh, is gonna be uh, Loki. You know, doing his own thing with these characters that he met in this game. Um, let me get rid of that. So that, that that's that's what I personally think. But uh, uh, if you're in the chat right now, please type something. I am going to end the stream here. My ass is fucking killing me sitting here. For two hours. <laughs> uh, I loved every second. Eric William is amazing. So again, if you're in chat right now, uh, please type something. Um, so I can say goodbye to you. Uh, who blew the horn? Uh, I blew the horn. Uh, Kratos blew a horn. Uh, Mimir also blew a horn in God over 2018. So I hope, you know, I hope those are those horns that you're talking about. Um, if you're in the chat, please say something so I can say goodbye. Uh, Georgi, thank you for being here. Uh, I, I mess up on these names. Uh, v i s h a l. Thank you so much for being here, Daniel. Heatwave. Adam. Sin. Kratos. Ninety nine. Uh, Namara. N a m r a. Thank you so much for being here as well. Uh, let me go ahead and scroll up here. Uh, Venom. Thank you so much for being here. A one gamer. Nick Brown. 
uh, Venom Fury. I think I already said your name. Uh, Shahab, thank you so much for being here. Captain Daniel, uh, TYX, uh, Captain Butt. <laughs> Such a weird name, man. Uh, Ellie, uh, Eli, uh, something underscore GT. All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, Wayne, thank you so much for being here. Something, JK. Uh, my, uh, Michael, uh, Big Burb, Godly Noob, uh, Volcrim, LOL, retracted his message. Uh, Daniel James, it'll be years until the next God of War. Yeah, it's gonna be years, but you know what? I've done this before. I have, uh... You know, I, I've definitely done this a lot of times in the past where I just strip content. I can make content for years based on God of War Ragnarok. So we'll be playing another one in a few years from now. Uh, yeah. Who's the Black Wolf in 2018 book who drags Kratos to Midgard? Uh, that was a... I want to know who... Yeah, the, the woman. I want to know who was the woman who brought Kratos to Midgard. But that, that was not answered here. Probably in the next game. Uh, will we see Kratos in, as the main character again? I don't know. Um, to be honest, if Kratos' story ends here, uh, right? If he ends here, I think it's a perfect way to end Kratos' story. Uh, Akash, thank you so much for being here. Right? I think if Kratos, uh, if his story ends here, you know, from him being who he was to who he became in God of War 2018, um, to the new person he became at the end of Ragnarok, and what he will become being revered by the people who love him because they, he helped everybody. I think this is such a perfect place to end his story. I think them showing Kratos' future um, shows where he's going to end up. Therefore, his story is over. And I will be, I'll, I'm happy with where this shit all ends. Um, how come we didn't get the full truth of what the snake said? Um, again, that, that it's setting up things. A lot of things are set up for the next game. Um, it's just it's it's, it's all setups for the next game. Um, think about it like this, right? The horn, who called the serpent? Um, the serpent's um past, right? Um, with the other giants and they who who you know his shit shit. Um, the full truth of what Mamir said. Um, why are there so many things about the serpent? That are not getting explained is because they're setups for the next title. That's why you have to you have to just piece these things together, you know. And Corey just put out a tweet saying that uh, their stories for another game, which means that there's a future for this franchise. I just don't think that the future will have Kratos at the helm. I think that they attempted to have a trace playable uh, in this game. They see that people loved it. That that's giving them the okay for the future. Um, and I think that's great. I think that's great. Kratos uh, did not come in the Midgard on his own. Kratos was dragged here. It, it's in the God of War book. Uh, possibly a new game plus. Yeah, 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 I think we'll get new game plus. Definitely get new game plus. It's, it's coming 100%. We just have to wait. A uh, good live video. Thank you so much, David. All right. That is it for the stream. It's been two hours. I have to take a piss. I have to get some sleep, and I have to stop sitting in this goddamn chair because my ass is killing me. But thank you all for watching this video. I appreciate it. I'm going to be out of here. Thank you guys and girls for listening. Deuces. It's always weird doing that outro live. I always feel like so cringy, but when I'm behind a mic, it's like I'm me. But saying deuces, I, I cut it out for a long time in my videos, but I brought it back, and people really do like it. Uh, do more streams like this? I definitely will. Uh, I definitely want to, you know put myself out there. I think the next stream I'm going to do, um, if Eric does any more stuff, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to cover that as of course, do reactions, but I also want to play Give Me God of War mode live with a death counter on the screen. How sick would that be, right? I'm not, I love God of War Ragnarok's combat, but I don't know if I'm ready for Give Me God of War yet, so uh, I think I want to do that. Wish there was something about the horse. This, the horse is not important. You know, it's like why show anything with the horse? It's simply just not important. Uh, I, I'd rather them talk, have more of Atreus and Angraboda than show off this random horse with a lot of legs, you know? It's it's not important. Uh, yeah, but this is, I think this is the perfect end to a story. I said I was going to end the stream. Let me actually end it now. I'm going to be out of here. Thank you guys and girls for listening. Deuces.